kind of like stag- stair stepped. Um, but like I didn't pay any attention to that because I didn't want um, you guys your sheets to be cluttered up with things that you weren't because I didn't want um, you guys to have any your use sheets for this session. Have- so, you know, if you sat down and tried to build this uh, your your beginning character, you wouldn't end up with these exact skills or these not skills these exact contracts. I just wanted you to have some fun stuff to play with. Um, <laughs> yeah, so these what, look these look good. What is a dot? Okay, so a dot is just a rank or a level in a particular um, thing. You can, uh, World of Darkness uses dots um, because when they write out their character sheets, they literally have a series of dots and you fill in from from one to five how many you have. Um, So if I say, you know, you have a dot in uh, a skill, you know, you have a dot in persuasion or something, it just means you got one one rank, one level in that, and you could have up to five. but uh, I just, for sake of clarity, I just wrote the number rather than actually portraying them as a dot. Let me see if I can. Okay. Mm-hmm. Numbers make sense now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if you see. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Hi, Dave. Um, so, hi, guys. Um, I'm Jess. Uh, I am one of the creators of uh, Change in the Lost, which is a World of Darkness game. And uh, we're going to be running you through a little sample scenario here. Um, One of the things that uh, one of the reasons why the continuing education program for geek therapeutics is bringing in games like Changing the Lost in addition to the uh, 5e D&D that you guys have been playing predominantly um, is to show some of the um, the diversity and the breadth and depth um, that you can find because not all tabletop role-playing games are the same just like not all card games are the same um, and it's more than uh, just whether you're playing fantasy adventures in a medieval uh, analog and fighting dungeons or whether you're playing space explorers or in this case changelings. Um, one of the things, of, one of the kinds of diversity that you can find in role-playing games is um, how they look at people and how they look at characters, how they define characters. Um, f- most I'm, I'm going to hazard to say most traditional RPGs have an axis that is um, in D and D. It's your race and your class. You you have the thing you were born as and the thing you learn how to do. Changeling kind of takes that and and that while it sounds very simple, it's it defines how the game looks and looks at and defines characters and and so how they're looking at and defining people um one of the things that i really like about loss is it doesn't hold to that x y axis in the same way uh in changeling your characters are not defined by what you were born as and what you learned how to do they're defined as what happened to you and how it changed you which is your seeming and your kith and how you have de- the 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 outlook that you have developed to deal with those things that have happened to you, which ends up being your court. Um, so as you, as you guys were um, choosing your characters, the the choices that you made were different than the choices you would have made um, if you would have say just been presented with you can play an elf or an orc because those are the things you were born at. Um, and I think that 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 outlook reflects throughout the game in kind of how you play the game and how uh, it addresses the character experience. Um, And I think that that's a really cool thing and a cool, it's kind of like if a lot of games are, you have a red hammer, but you're playing another D&D type game, maybe you've got a blue hammer. Well, changing the loss is kind of like the screwdriver. It's just a different tool. It's not necessarily a better or worse, but it could be better or worse for a particular situation that you're wanting to explore. So um, that's one of the reasons why I'm very, very excited about sharing it with you. Uh, You guys have all done a wonderful job in picking out characters. Uh, And I'd like to, as we go through, I would like to start off by you guys telling me one thing, one observable trait about your character's appearance um, so that uh, you know, it's just something that somebody across the room would point at and go, hey, uh, you, you with the wings, you with the whatever. So um, let's see, uh, who wants to start? 
Go ahead. Um, I think as a fairest um, with draconic kith, I would have uh, that Alex has like sharp, uh, you know, white, pearly, you know, pretty, but sharp, pointy teeth. Sure. Um, very dragon looking um, when you look close, carefully at him. Awesome. Awesome. I'm grooving on that. Uh, who wants to go? So is it easier for you guys if I just call on you in order? Is that, does that take some of the pressure of uh, who goes when? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, Tim, do you have something that you'd like to like, what, what would I notice about your character if I walked into the room right away? I think the thing you'd probably notice first of all is the, the aroma uh, that comes from him. It's just this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, like <clears throat> citrusy, some slightly sweet notes like cocoa, cherry blossoms, vanilla, that sort of a feel. Nice. Very, very fair skin too. Delightful, yeah. delightful. Wow, that sounds like a cool person to hang out with. <laughs> uh, how about Russ? Russ, Russmas? Yeah, uh, I would define him like a brutish looking ogre, mm -hmm. but in a human form. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look like the guy you want to meet even in broad daylight. <laughs> basically kind of guy yeah 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 M might, maybe he's a nice person but do you dare to <laughs> do you dare to, to find out yeah yeah so yeah yeah awesome awesome autumn what about gray so i'm seeing gray is kind of like tall but like impossibly thin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just kind of as a wizened so nice 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 that's very notable uh nikki how about Raz? No, Lou, sorry. What about um, you? I'm, I'm saying Lou is having like wolf ears. <gasps> Ooh, nice. <Right> there. <laughs> nice. Very, very cool. He's de definitely got that kind of predator thing going on. Mm -hmm. Love it. And Ray, how about Raz? What okay. do they look like? So I'm looking at Raz as being very short and very slight. Um, so about five foot tall, very, very thin black hoodie. Mm -hmm. a little shock of like silvery hair mm -hmm. um kind of poking out and large eyes that kind of reflect the sadness in mm -hmm. in you when they look at you nice. almost like mirrors love that love that okay that gives me a lot to go with and gives, is you very evocative you guys did a great job with that okay so you guys are all um, members of a freehold. So a freehold is a small is a settlement of changelings. Um, the, quite often they they take they gather around cities. Um, and your freehold is named the freehold of Fire River. And the reason for that is there's a river that runs through your city directly east west the entirety of it. And so when the sun rises and when the sun sets, the light is reflected on the river, and it just it looks like the entire river is on fire. So your freehold is called. Uh, Fire River, and you, you've been there long enough, even if you've only been there for a few months, it's up to you how long ago your Durant's uh, ended and how long you've been with the Freehold, but you, you know that um, the Freehold is ruled by a series of monarchs every season in accordance with the, nature, the seasons of, the, of nature. Um, a new member is chosen uh, from each of the, from the court that, that uh, is the season that's coming up. Um, and they rule for about three months and then they hand off the scepter. And there's actually a beautiful gold scepter. It's about yay long. It's got a, a fire opal that must be as big as a goose's egg. And it's it, at the end and it's enclosed in gold that is kind of wraps around it and cages it to make it look like it's the center of a flame. And that scepter is extremely important to the ceremonies that are involved with the transition of power. Um, the, the different courts in the freehold change off that power every season because they believe that the idea of holding, of, of letting go of power in, um, willingly is something that is so foreign to the true Fae that they would never be able to recognize a, a group that actually does that. So they believe that it's an, a layer of protection uh, from drawing attention of the fact that there are so many lost gathered in one place and so much Fae energy gathered in one place. Normally that would shine like a beacon to the to the true fey and your keepers would all be coming back to reclaim you so this is very very important um and it's right now it's about 
it's mid-March. Um, it's the time is coming for the end of the uh, winter rain and uh, the ceremony for spring to step up um, normally would have happened by now. Um, it, it's been delayed uh, and it's been delayed because while normally this time of year, um, the flowers would start to bud out, the leaves would be starting to come out a little bit. Um, your city has a, a cherry blossom festival where the cherry trees along the river all, um, when they all come into bloom, it's a big thing, but it, it is not going on this year. About three weeks ago, um, your weather instead was starting to turn for spring took a deep dive into winter. Um, you maybe get a little bit of snow every year in the winter time, not, not a huge amount. You have had more in the last three weeks than you normally get in 10 winters. Um, the entire city is just frozen down. Grocery stores are starting to run out of food because trucks can't get in. But it all seems to be strangely associated right around your city. Um, meteorologists from all over the country are calling it a, 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 a anomaly and they're not really sure how to answer it. Everybody's getting pretty tense because the, the ceremony to make the transition of power has now been delayed several times, um, in part because no one has heard from the winter monarch in at least a month. The person who nominally holds the throne right now is a winter courtier, her name is Perdue. Um, they are, uh, they have held the throne through more winters than any other person in the history of this freehold. Um, they've, they've held the, the throne 20, 23 times. People, you know, people are not really sure exactly how far back it goes, but, you know, they, quite some time that they have been the person to take the throne when the, when the time comes in winter. Um, they're known for wearing a, a all beige. A lot of times winter courtiers will wear sparkly white, you know, Elsa type, um, you know, diamonds like, like ice falls and, and that kind of thing. They wear all beige. Um, they wear a mask that doesn't even have eye holes. It's just a mask. Um, they always show up in beige in, uh, with a cloak. Um, there's even some rumors that maybe there's more than one Purdue, and maybe this is actually just a role that different winter courtiers take, um, but the winter courtiers, you know, deny it, and those of you who are in the winter court, you know, you, you know that that's entirely not true. Um, they, that's, that's, that's silly. Uh, people just don't understand. Um, so you guys, uh, you're kind of, you know, the stress levels are running a little high in the freehold because you know that not only is this just a matter of the ceremony being put off, but if the seasons don't turn, this large of a group of changelings in one place could very easily draw the attack uh, attention of one or more true fae. Um, and uh, today, you guys have all received in your mailboxes, if you live in an apartment and, uh, uh, you know, live, live within town, or if you have a little hollow, a little, um, you know, hidey hole carved out into the hedge, um, which is the supernatural buffer zone between the human world and the, and the world of Arcadia, the world of the true fae, um, if it, you've gotten a, a, a letter, it's, it, strangely enough for a, for a fae message, uh, it's a very, very mundane looking business envelope. And in the upper corner, in the return address, it says um, correct calculations accounting, and it's got a, a street address of down in, in the downtown area. And uh, in an equally mundane looking type font is your name in the, you know, the two place. Um, and when you open it up, it is, it looks more like a business email than it actually does a correspondence. You know, it's got to your name from, um, the gentleman's name is uh, Philibert J. Clark. Uh, and then it's got a bunch of uh, gobbledygook afterwards. It's a CPA, CIA, CMA, a whole bunch of lettery gobbledygook that are probably this person's title. And it simply says, um, simply says, uh, your, your presence is required. There's a date and a time. It's tomorrow at noon. Um, and uh, it's signed. Philbert J. Clark, uh, and you, those of you who are in the Spring Court, um, Pax, 
uh, you you recognize this is a this is a spring courtier. He's he's known around town to he's he's nobody special per se, but, but he he's worked with the spring court and is a member of the spring courts for years and years now. No reason not to test him. The rest of you may have seen him at a at a freehold gathering or that kind of thing. The name's not unfamiliar, but it's just kind of kind of a strange missive. So time passes and would you like to attend yeah but i'm gonna show up late man i don't want to just get there right on time that doesn't make any sense i gotta take my time get in my van and go over there totally I'm fair gonna, totally fair i'm gonna show up early you're gonna show up early fair oh, enough yeah. an hour so, before hour so so when you uh what about the rest of you are you are you going to attend on time early late I'm going to show up uh, right on time, but I'm going to kind of hang around outside to kind of see who else is showing up. Cool, 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 cool. And just I standing by the door looking menacing. <laughs> okay. So um, the address is for a completely mundane looking accountant office. Um, it's got a you know, you can look in through the front window. Um, it's got a small lobby. There's a uh, secretary's desk in the front area. There's a woman sitting behind it who looks completely human. Um, you, you guys will know that uh, you each can see each other's uh, min, uh, M-I-E-N. Uh, and, and what that is, is your, your actual looks, your fey looks. Um, this is who you really are. However, humans don't see that. They see what's called the mask. So they see a pretty mundane looking person. There might be a little element of something. Like if you, if your mane had made you look like a, a tree person, like an ent from Tolkien, um, maybe your, in, in your mask still has like bark brown skin, or maybe it's got really rough skin maybe it occasionally looks like you've got flowers in your hair or, or leaves in your hair but nothing nothing that wouldn't be explainable with costuming or hair dye or you know the the broad range of humanity's attributes um so but this this woman looks absolutely entirely human um when the rest of you show up there is a very very large and gruff looking uh, gentleman leaning up against the wall uh, outside the door, looking like he's probably the bodyguard for the place. Uh, those of you who uh, have, you know, who have uh, had encounters with, uh, with Rip before know that he's, he's a member of the summer court and he's a, a member of the free, oh, autumn court, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, remember, the, remember the autumn court. Um, so, and, uh, you all, you all, except for Pax, um, go in about, you know, right about noon. Uh, the woman is is very, uh, she's like, oh, oh. And she kind of looks at you, not in the way that somebody would look if they saw, you know, a person who had wings or wolf ears or that kind of thing, but just kind of a, well, this is an interesting group of clients that is not the kind of people that I normally see showing up together at an accountant's office. Um, but she, after the initial kind of like flicker of surprise, she is extremely professional. She welcomes you to take a seat. There's a variety of uh, seating in the lobby, the area there. Uh, she uses her little buzzer on her desk uh, to say, uh, Mr. Clark, I believe your noon appointment is here. And uh, there is a voice from the other side of the speaker uh, says, uh, thank you very much. Uh, please send them in. And you would have noticed as you as you cross town to get to this, that the storms are just still raging. Like even though somebody has obviously swept the, the sidewalks here and, and cleared the shoveled the sidewalks, there's still a sprinkling little drift that you have to push out of the way as you pull the, the door open. The, the storms are not letting up in any way, shape or form. Uh, and the, the voice on the other side of the intercom says, you know, uh, Miss Marker, uh, why don't you go ahead? It looks like it's going to be getting worse this afternoon. Why don't you go ahead and, and take the rest of the day off? Make sure you can get home safe before dark. Uh, I'll lock up. And uh, the woman looks surprised, but uh, obviously very happy and is very pleased to be getting home before the storm gets any worse. And she gathers up her things and scuttles off, uh, shutting the door behind her. Uh, about this time is probably when uh, when Pax shows up and 
she's very confused, but. Uh, yeah, he's stepping out of the back of his van. His van actually arrived and then he got into the back of his van. He climbs <laughs> out of the back of his van after, you know, aligning his chakras and whatnot and gets out with this bag uh, over his shoulder. And this bag is great. I'll post a picture on the Discord, but this bag is like <laughs> a, um, like a wool chicken on the end of a bag, on the end of a strap. And uh, he walks into the, he kind of just flashes her the peace sign and just kind of walks into the, uh, walks into the accounting office. Yeah, she he's, looks he's like not she, a care in the world. She looks like she really wants to go back and make sure that this is okay. But the storm is just like it, the wind whips the, the door out of her hand and slams it shut behind you. And she kind of stands there for a second doing this and then just makes a beeline for her car. She's just like, I got, I, I'm going to get home before I can't get home, you know? Um, so at, when you, when you guys are all in the office, um, the there's a door that is behind the receptionist desk and uh it opens and a very very oh that's a really cute bag um there a, a very mundane looking very accountant looking gentleman um mm -hmm. opens the door and and peers out the only thing exceptional about him is his skin is extremely pale and it is decorated with what looks like tattoos of numbers in columns that just mark it and and as you're watching they they move like they're like they're tallying themselves across his skin um and he looks around as if he's maybe expecting more of you and kind of nose counts and well i suppose you'll do come in and leaves the door open as he goes back into his office i'm gonna come in eventually <laughs> um kind of just kind of striding by the others uh with my <laughs> chicken bag in tow i'm gonna get a, a little spot at the table i'm gonna pull open up the bag I'm going to pull out um, what looks like an Indian scarf uh, and lay it on the table in front of him. And then he starts pulling these little crystals uh, out of his bag and starts just setting them uh, in front of him on the table. Um, just, you know, periodically setting some crystals in a nice little pattern on the table in front of him. The accountant, his desk is so precise. Um, every single paper on there is aligned exactly with the edges of the of the desk. Um, the there even seems to be a pattern in how tall the stacks are um, that forms a really kind of aesthetically pleasing um, arrangement. Um, the walls of the office are uh, one one side of the office is floor to ceiling bookshelves, and there are just leather bound looks like a, a tomes of like tax code and and all kinds of things that just don't don't make any sense to anyone who's not an accountant and the other wall is entirely lined with a a bank of filing cabinets that that go easily seven foot tall they've got six or so shelves per um and uh there's like three big columns of them that take up the majority of the of the row um and he uh, of the wall and he he settles back behind his desk and he says you know, kind of looks at you guys all like hmm. well um as you know the uh monarch winter monarch of the winter court is not been observed in approximately 27 days uh, 17 hours and four minutes. And uh, it is causing a great deal of consternation in the freehold. I have been hired as a representative for a client who would like their identity to remain anonymous um, to ensure that the scepter of Fire River is recovered so that the ceremony can continue and does no longer need to be, dis be postponed. Um, we're hoping this will stop all of this wintry nonsense. We're hoping this and, will um, stop so all of this. And so that's the job. Are you interested? He's just 
the most the worst PR person for recruiting adventurers onto a quest that you could ever imagine. He's it, this is so out of his out of his league. And he's just looking at you like, well, aren't are you yes? Yeah, As he questions? Yeah, something? sure. <laughs> As he pauses in the in the moment, I lift up my little same bowl that I produced for my bag as well. Kind of narrows his eyes at you like this most most unexpected. What do you guys think? So, Good idea. So I kind of move over to where the file cabinets are because it's a little bit darker over there and uh, yeah, kind of move careful, to where... Careful, careful, careful. Don't touch those. I very oh. much... I I make sure I kind of startle at his direction and I kind of move <laughs> back a little bit and just kind of give him a look and sort of slip down <laughs> and say, so you called us here for a job? Yes. Exactly. I, I've got nothing else to do. Yeah, let's go for it. What's the job? You, it's two parts. You will need to find the Winter Monarch and you will need to recover the scepter and return it to me so that I can make certain that it falls into the right hands so that we can go through with the ritual to transfer the power and the monarchy wheel can continue turning. If you agree to do so, um, I have a location um, and he gets up from behind his desk and he goes over to the first file cabinet and he pulls the file cabinet drawer out and it just keeps coming and coming and coming. The file cabinet's probably three feet deep in, in appearance, but the drawer that he is pulling out is probably seven, eight feet long. Uh, and and the filing inside of it, well, while the organi organization, the, the folders are all very precise, um, they're all color coded, they're all very modern, um, they're all labeled with little, you know, uh, printed out labels, the you know, little tabs that stick out. Um, but you can see, like, as he's he's going through them, um, you know, like he'll open one and like light will glow out of it and uh, he'll flip past that and he opens it opens another one and, and like a little green tendril comes like starting it and he's like, get back, get back. And uh, eventually he, he comes to, you know, about four feet into the, the file. He comes to the file he wants and pulls it out and uh, he, he takes out a piece of paper and on that piece of paper is uh, is a code. It's just a, a set of numbers. Said this this will you you need to the sorry. It's um this is all very unexpected. The Winter Monarch's location is unknown to me. However, my client has deemed has a. Uh, determined that there is an individual in the local goblin market who is uh, has negotiated with them for the location this slip of paper is the price you will take this to the goblin market um, to melusine and melusine will give you the location of the winter monarch you will then go to that location you will retrieve the scepter by whatever means is necessary and you will return it here to my office now you guys will have noticed that he's talking about hiring you for a job and he hasn't mentioned any form of compensation yet mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. to goblin market itself can be a dangerous thing goblin markets are locations within the hedge um, where not quite often they're held where two trods which are pathways through the hedge that are as safe as things get in the hedge. Um, and quite often they're located along a trod. This one happens to be located where two major trods just outside of the city meet. Um, and um, you, you may have been there before. It's, it's an ongoing gathering place, but it is not without dangers to get there, especially if you don't have anyone with you who knows uh, the hedge very well, or if you don't travel within the hedge very well. 
um, or very, very often. Um, it's, it's dangerous just to go into the hedge and it's always dangerous to deal. Goblin markets are ran by fake creatures, um, way, way, way lesser versions of the true fae that, that captured you and and took you for your durants um but they're still they're still tricky mm -hmm. and they're still dangerous and some of them are just outright murderous um you just never quite know what you're getting with them um they're not held to human morality in any way shape or form um so the he's he's wanting you to go to this goblin market obtain this item or to obtain the location and then go follow that location, which may very well be also in the hedge, um, to to observe the, to obtain this this item for him. And he seems quite happy to not discuss payment. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I'm not happy. Not discussing payment. I want to discuss payment. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> The hedge is a dangerous place to ask yeah. us to go there. What what are you willing to give? Oh, it is it, it's not me. Um, however, my my client uh, has offered. Hmm. Let me consult my file. Um, one favor of your asking, if it is within their power, they will grant it. One for each of the party? No. One favor. This is a very dangerous matter. Exactly. Very dangerous thing you're having us do, Mr. Middle, Ma Mr. Middle Management. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stand up and walk over to the window, and I want to, or to the, because there's, there are, like, is there, are there any reflective surfaces in this room? Oh yeah, definitely. There is oh, a God. there. There is a window behind the gentleman, so that when he's sitting at his desk, uh, the light comes falls in on the desk. Um, and there's there's other you know like on the bookshelves occasionally there'll be a, a, a like a decorative plate or a, a, like a, a metal plaque that ha, you know has an award you know, on it that he's gotten for exceptional accounting. Um, yeah. You know who even knew that they gave such awards? But uh, yeah. So yes, there's definitely reflective surfaces in this area. I'd like to enact a contract. Certainly. So um, what, you, what you're going to do okay. to enact your contract, you have two options. The first one is to pay the cost. Um, mm -hmm. You'll see the cost is probably one glamour. Um, the other one is to evoke the, the catch. And the catch is basically a substitute way of paying for the power of that contract. Um, so you're, you, you, if you look at your contract, see, is that catch something that your character reasonably would have done or is, is it being fulfilled at this point? Would you consider other uh, changelings in the area to have other lost in the area to have a close connection with me or no? Because oh, I think, related? yeah, I think your character, your, your character is a spring courtier, right? And yeah. he, yeah, he, he's, Seems like a very personable kind of person, at least from what I remember of the description. Sure, yes. well, I'd like to enact uh, reflections of the past mm -hmm. uh, with a catch. Okay. And uh, I want to try to find a reflective surface that would show perhaps people entering this office. Oh. Uh, looking oh, for, looking for possibly clever. other changelings. Yeah. Very clever. Okay, so um, what you are going to do then, let's see. So that is reflections of the past. So your dice pool for that is your wits or your weird plus your wits. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look on your character sheet under your attributes, wits is a mental attribute and you've got a score there. And that is the number of die uh, that your score allows you to roll for this, for this um, mechanic. Uh, your weird is uh, on your traits area. Um, so for packs, you've got a uh, wits of two and a weird of one. So that gives you three dice in your die in your die pool. Um, are there any other? Ex normally at this point, you could also add in things like equipment. If you had a particular, you know, I bet you do. In your um, in your bag, you ha probably have a, a special cloth that you use when you're polishing, like your um, your here. Yeah, exactly. Your your singing bowl and and that kind of thing. So if you if you were to go over and say, just just 
you know, polish some fingerprints off of that reflective surface that you're looking at, that would give you an equipment bonus. So you would be able to add another die into your rule or let's, into your role. Let's do that. I'll just say to him, oh, it looks like you got, there's a few fingerprints here. No. What? Fingerprints? No. I got it. That's I got it. it, man. Relax. Thank oh, you. God, I Thank got you. it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll for that. Certainly. <laughs> Um, I have, so for people watching, I have two nines, a seven and a three. Fantastic. Okay. So in, in the world of darkness, uh, in Changeling, your successes are an eight, nine, or a 10, um, on, on, a 10 sided die. Um, also if you roll a 10, you're, they do, uh, there's a, a rule called 10 again. So basically if you roll a 10, it counts as a success, but you also then get to re-roll that one die to see if you can gain more successes. It's sometimes referred to as slang as exploding, 10s explode. So in this case, you didn't get any 10s, but it sounds like you got, if I'm remembering your numbers right, two successes? Yep. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So um, let me take a look at the power. Pull up any image reflected in the, in the last week. Okay. So you're looking for other changelings specifically um, in this reflection to see if any other changelings have visited and had their reflection observed in this, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, you see, you see, um, you don't see the secretary. Um, sh she's, <clears throat> she's uh, not, does not appear when you're scrying specifically for changelings. Um, you know, there, there are various and sundry people that you recognize, probably four or five different people from the freehold. Um, nobody that seems to be like doing anything other than like accounting paperwork. Um, and, and certainly nobody, the, the file cabinets don't open during any of the time periods when, um, when the, there are changelings reflected in the surface. So you kind of get the feeling that if this person met with a changeling about this topic, it didn't happen here. Okay, got it. So, but good, good use, good, very intuitive use of that of that power. Um, so the the gentleman kind of hems and haws, Mr. Clark hems and haws for a few moments, and he he says, "All right, the, as a contingency, my client was expecting there to be a lot more people here. To be honest." Um, uh, and um, I, I offer you this pledge. I am willing, I cannot promise further promises on his, on their behalf, but I will promise you as a negotiator and as the um, arbitrator of this, that I will do my utmost to ensure that you are each gifted a favor this favor may be slightly less than the all-encompassing single favor that was offered as as would only be appropriate for multiplying the the numerical value sixfold um so i cannot guarantee that they will it will be the carte blanche um favor that my client was originally offered but i believe that i can safely say that they would be willing to offer a lesser favor to each one of you. Would that be acceptable? <clears throat> can I enact a contract? Of course you can. Okay. You can enact a contract at any point. Um, contracts for the most part are uh, instant actions. You can mm -hmm. any round or any turn make one instant action and move up to your speed in yards. Um, during that action at the same time, or should you choose not to take an instant action, you can move double your speed kind of as a full out dash. So yes, you definitely can enact a contract. Which contract would you like to enact? I would like to enact light the path to learn the motivation of an action or a statement. Oh, very, very nicely done. Very nicely done. Let me pull that up real quick. I wanna see the specifics on it. So, um, look at your dice pool, figure out how many die you should be rolling, and go ahead and roll them. Wits plus weird. So it says wits plus weird versus weird. subjects, mm -hmm. composure plus weird. So for I'm looking at wits plus weird. You're, you, you're taking your wits yeah. and weird. And then what I'll do is I will roll for Mr. Clark, I will roll their composure plus 
what was it, dear? Composure plus weird. Composure plus weird. So if my wits is four and my weird is one, I roll five die? Yes, you roll okay. five die. And then you're going to pay attention to anything that is eight, nine, or ten. Okay. Now they, may be, <laughs> they may be zeros on your die. All right. I've got an, I've, so do you want to hear all of them or just? Uh, just, the, to just tell me how many you have that are eight, nine, or 10. I and have then, one eight. You have one eight? Okay. Yes. So you got one success on this. And then we're going to roll his, let's see. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, light the path. Fantastic. Uh, subject composure versus weird. Okay. So he is kind of a composed gentleman, but he gets frazzled pretty easily. So he's got two dice for his composure and he's just the same strength. Your weird represents how powerful you are with feyness, if that makes sense. Um, so as you, as you would play these characters ongoing, um, you, one of the options you have for spending your experience points is to buy more weird. The upside of that is that it increases your glamour pool, which is your spendable supernatural energy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it eventually will increase how many glamour you can spend in a turn. Um, the downside of it is changelings have a, a, a statistic that I, I didn't use very heavily in, in creating your guys's characters because it's a bit complicated. It's called clarity. And it basically represents how well you're balancing your face self and your human self. Um, if you're, if you're, clarity goes super low, you go into bedlam, which is basically a state of madness um, or full immersion into fayness, um, which is chaotic energy and that kind of thing. If you're clarity stays too high you have difficulty enacting your contracts and that kind of thing because you're you're just not that connected you put a distant wall between yourself and your face so um so uh weird is your representation of how how oomph you are as a changeling so he's he's the same level as you guys he has one so i'm gonna roll his and I got a six, a four, and a two. I got zero successes. So you were able, even though you just kind of like, mm, I'm not really sure I did this. You, you just, he's really easy to read. And uh, you can tell when, um, when you're using this, that his motivation for, for this, he really, really wants the situation to get handled. Um, he's very nervous about what this what this big storm is happening, and um, and he's 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 also very intimidated by his client, whoever that client is. He wants to make certain that he is doing the utmost job for them that he possibly can. Did that answer your question satisfactorily? And I just was also curious as to whether he was uh, actively wishing us harm. Or, oh, or trying to harm us. No, no, no. He doesn't. Okay. He, he doesn't have any malevolent thoughts whatsoever going on, or or malevolent body language kind of things. You're, you're, yeah. He's he's just just really wants to get this job done. He wants to get you out the door on this thing so he can mark it off his little to do list. Okay. All right. So I'm satisfied. So I I I would like I will take this job. Fantastic. Uh, the rest of you agreed and he, um, I'm not going to craft a huge pledge for you guys right now, but what he would ask for is for you guys to enter into a pledge with him, which is a, a supernaturally sealed oath um, that basically he puts forth that he, he promises that his client will offer you each a minor favor in exchange for your services. Um, should you be able to recover the scepter for uh, the scepter of fire river for his client. Oh. Okay. And so you, yeah. you guys all make and you feel you, you can feel when a pledge kicks in um, and you, you guys all feel, okay, I got this, I got this thing. And you also, because you've done this pledge, part of the pledge is that he is lending a bit of his strength to you in the, um, 
in the in the upcoming thing. So you guys all have one extra glamour that's just kind of sitting around waiting for you to use it. Okay. And that's that is a cool. benefit of entering into this pledge with him. So at any point you can you can call on Mr. Clark's glamour and use it if you're out of glamour. Um, you can use it as a die uh, when you are like if you're in a die pool that you know you you're like oh i've only, i only have three dice to roll here you can one time choose one extra die and put it into your die pool on this adventure okay um and so once he's once he's this has been pledged he goes he goes pulls out another drawer and again flips through it weird things come out little sparkles come out moths fly out of one folder and he pulls out this key and this key is like probably this long it's just this big old gnarly like skeleton key looking thing and he shuts the the drawer of the file cabinet very carefully and he kind of walks to the side of it you know it sticks out like three feet from the wall so he walks to the side of it so he's like between the two file cabinets and he turns to the side of the file cabinet puts the key into it and he mumbles a few things and turns the key and the side of the file cabinet opens up and you can see a pathway to the hedge through this file cabinet now this doesn't make any sense at all because obviously you should be seeing at the very least you should be seeing all the file folders and drawers and everything but nope it is an open pathway as tall as the filing cabinet is probably wide enough for two of you to walk through it at a time and through it you can smell the 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 scent of just super super nature um what you see through it is is a briars and brambles a wall of thorns that is as tall as you can see up and a pathway going forth and he says this this trod will take you to the goblin market safely and just kind of waits for you to pass through hmm. so I'm gonna you cook it all my crystals and put them yeah, away. Up all your crystals. yeah. <laughs> so so i look i look at uh I look at uh, Phil Libert and I ask him to please hold on to my skateboard um, while I while we go. I'll be back for this. I just kind of. You can leave that with Miss Mark's desk if you would like. So I just kind of the lobby. <laughs> I, I slip. I go into the lobby, slip it underneath her desk, like to the side, so and then come back. Okay. So as you go, oh, go ahead. Before we leave, can I use Witch's intuition? Of course you can. Of course you can. Let me pull that up real quick and see. Uh, what does that do? It. I learn one fear from the subject's subconscious. Oh, okay, definitely. So the dice pool for that is wits plus weird minus the subject's composure. We already uh, determined that the subject's composure is two. So roll your wits plus weird pool and tell me how many successes you get. Oh, wait, a zero is a 10, right? So I have a, a zero is a 10. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so you just have one 10. That's the only success. Mm -hmm. okay. So you bank that one 10, and then you can reroll that die again and try and get more successes. What if I get another 10? <laughs> then it explodes and you get to do it again. So you've now got two <laughs> bank successes. That is it. Okay, so you have two bank successes. I'm going to roll his two die for his composure. And I got a two and a six. Poor Mr. Philibert is not feeling very well put together today. So you, you get a, um, you can acquire knowledge of one of the subject spheres. Now, because you've gotten more than one success, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you the opportunity to either, you can either specifically hone in and say that you want to gain a success or a, a, a fear about something he has a phobia about, something in relation to business, something in relation to this quest. So you can either target the fear and, to, and find out a fear in a certain category, or you can just get two fears randomly. Which would you like to do? Um, I don't know if I can get the specific, but I'm curious about if he has any fear of the client. Oh, okay, very good. Um, do you get the sense that he he has not fear per se? Um, there's definitely some like I don't want to disappoint this person. 
Um, but not, not the sense of like, I fear that they're going to do me harm or that they're necessarily a super scary person or that kind of thing. But there's definitely some, some, some in, invested um, desire to please. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Thank you. Fantastic. Good use. Good use. Okay. So um, you all travel through this uh, gateway. Yes. 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 Okay. Fantastic. So he um, he shuts the door behind you, and it as, as you you hear it, and it sounds like a filing cabinet drawer shutting. It's that metallic, you know, jittery sound of thin metal shutting behind you. But when you turn to look at it, there is no door there. It is just a path through the thorns that goes back as far as you can see and leads off into the darkness. Um, ahead of you. If you look forward, um, you see a um, you see the local goblin market, um, and we might have a photo of that. Um, and uh, it's it's kind of I mean it's it's kind of a combination of what you think of as like a fantasy uh, farmers market, um, a swap meet, um, some of the some of the buildings that are their buildings some of the stalls are um very obviously just like lean tos with like cloth and wood cobbled together um some of them are permanent buildings that have like storefronts open uh, or uh, stall fronts open ahead of them but it's obvious that probably somebody lives in the back area some of them are completely nomadic looking where it just looks like somebody plopped a, a lean to down here and and did it um some of them are kind of strange like there's one that looks like it's actually made of plants growing up over the frame itself like like you know like the entire shade area is made of vines um and over in one corner there's what you swear is like a 1964 vita van um the the uh front um uh hood uh is open it shows that there's no uh engine or anything in it um and the, the wheels are all replaced with what looks like wooden circles uh in in still like cartwheels instead of uh uh rubber and that kind of thing but yeah there's a there's a, there's a vita van over there mm -hmm. um and uh your you your person that you've uh, been sent to see um mr clark said was named melisine um how do you proceed Hey guys, hold up, hold up, hold up. Listen, I like the nature, but how many of you, how many of you guys have actually been to a goblin market before? No? Okay. <laughs> wait, a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, sure. listen, like listen, there's like four things you got to keep in mind, right? When you go to the goblin market, <clears throat> first thing is, no, and he looks directly at the big guy. He says, no, no violence or intimidation. <laughs> These guys aren't going to take kindly to that kind of stuff, man. Uh, they, they don't like that. You're going to get, a, it's going to be trouble. The second thing is, and, and probably more trouble than you can bite off. The second thing is, you got to trust that you're going to get what you're going to get. Like they're going to tell you what you're going to get. Now that doesn't mean there's no catches. So make sure you think about that too, but little side effects, stuff like that. And you can't get a refund. You're not bringing anything back to this goblin market. That's not happening. And also you got to honor your deal. Cause if you, the deal you're going to make, it isn't money. They're not going to ask for money. Uh, you got to honor whatever deal it is you're putting out there. So just play cool, man, play cool. They're here to do a job. We're here to do a job, but let's play by the rules as much as we can, man. So I'm like sniffing the air. <laughs> like trying to see what's going on oh but the scents here the scents here lou are amazing there is there is every kind of every kind of meat and food product you could ever imagine uh and some stuff that smells like food but that you cannot place in any way shape or form um there's all kinds of like that there's some bad smells there's some people that are people people um walking through here that are well there's no there's no no apparent um humans as you're as you're looking at it from the outside um there are goblins um there are fey creatures there are hobs um 
all kinds of sentient, bipedal, for the most part, individuals, um, anything you can imagine from out of a fairy tale or folklore or horror movie or that kind of thing, you, you, it's not unlikely that you would see something like that here. It's, it, they're just as diverse as you guys are. Um, and even more so because they're not the most of them. You see some that you're like, oh, that that might be that might be a lost that you know that that could be a darkling that could be a beast. Um, but there's a lot of them that you know are just they're fake fake creatures of various and sundry sorts, hedge dwellers and that kind of thing. Hmm. I, there... I, Go ahead, Ray. Oh, I I take a moment and just kind of close my eyes and, and listen on the wind and hear and try to listen into anything that might seem like anything we, that might lead us in the direction we're trying to go. Ooh, okay. So you, are you listening like specifically for maybe the name Melusine? Because mm -hmm. that's, that's basically the only clue you were given about this. Okay. Yes. So as you listen, you, there are so many, oh, actually here, that's a, that's actually a contract you have, isn't it? Um, I think there is a contract. Let me see. I'm flipping through here. Whoops. Yeah. I have never tread shadow patch primordial voice and light the path. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Do, do, do. This is Raz. Sorry. I've got you guys all kind of stacked up here. <laughs> uh, Rip and Raz. There we go. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, so you have got um, primordial voice is it's an, an elemental contract because you are an air elemental. You have this association with air. And um, if you roll your socialize plus weird and get successes, you can ask, actually ask the air around you about um, anything that occurred in that area within the last day. Um, and then if you get more successes, you can ask more specific things. So, so you could, you could do this and, and literally be able to tell when anyone in the last day has said the word Melusine in your direct area. Does that sound like something you'd like to try? Yes. Fantastic. Okay. So you're going to spend one glamour. You guys okay. all, um, on your, on your uh, character sheets, your glamour pool, you'll notice that you have a five and then a slash and a 10. What that means is you start off out with five glamour points out of a pool of total 10. And you can recover glamour in various and sundry ways if you start getting low. Um, one of the ways is to um, try to siphon it off of humans who are experiencing intense emotions. Um, you also, you know that there are hedge fruits, there are items that grow in the hedge that you eat and they can give you a glamour back. Um, that might, might be the kind of thing that you might be able to bargain for in the goblin market. So right now, you if you haven't spent any, you have five glamour and you can spend one of them to activate that contract. And I'm sorry, I should have explained that when people were first activating their contracts. Yeah, so I, I spent one of my glamour, but then also I have a catch. Um, Ooh make an offering to the element hang up ribbons for it to flow through so can mm -hmm. i pull can i pull a, a very thin gray silk um ribbon out of my pocket of my hoodie mm -hmm. and very uh surreptitiously tie it up to a a, a stick that's kind of sticking up out of one sure. of the the st stalls that we're right next to Definitely. and kind of tie it and say a little little uh, incantation to sure. the air around certainly 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 Okay, so you don't even need to spend your glamour then because your catch is basically, it's the, the shortcut, the, the work around to, to spending glamour. Um, so you don't have to spend your glamour for that. So roll me your socialized plus weird. Okay, so my socialized is two, my weird is one, so three, uh -huh. Okay. I have one nine. One nine, okay, fantastic. So you've gotten one success. You, you, you're whispering to the, the air and you're like, hey, you know, I'm, I, I, has anybody been talking about this Melusine person? You know, where, where, where the, the name sounds familiar. Where is, where is it going on? Uh, and sure enough, the wind, the wind kind of picks up and it like plays with your, the, the edge of your hoodie and it's kind of whispering in your ear and it's like, oh yeah, 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 people talk about Melusine. Yeah, she's over there, she's over there. That's her stand, she does bargains. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I just realized, can you guys hear me whispering? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just realized, I don't know if I'm actually activating my mic or not. So, um, and the wind, the wind kind of, kind of like tugs a little bit at your, at your hair and you can see like, you know, sometimes you can see a little dust devil in the wind, you the swirl leaves or that kind of thing. And it, it's kind of, you know, you can see it, it kind of picks up a little bit of dust along the path. And then a few feet forward, it, it, it kind of shakes the, the leaves on one of the, um, the stalls and uh, the, there's a, a place up ahead that that has that's selling scarves and that kind of thing and it it ripples through there and so if you guys want you can kind of just follow it to to kind of get the the idea of where it's kind of leading you and I just kind of point to the rest of the party and say it's it's over there she's over <laughs> there let's 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 go that way let's go do we pass we're, any I'm sorry and when we're walking I'm gonna stay a couple of feet behind the rest, like, like watching over the situation and having control in a way, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. basically being menacing, you know. There you go. This is a, a very unusual situation for you, Rip, because oh, yeah. there are people here who are bigger than you. And not, not everybody by any stretch of the imagination, but there's a couple people that are obviously shoppers who are, who are like, half again your size and there's there's every once in a while you'll you'll see what's obviously a bodyguard out in front of a stall and sometimes they're they're pretty burly individuals um so there's one one person um that is uh leaning forward so far that their 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 arms are long enough they're literally knuckling the ground like a like a silverback gorilla but their skin is green and it kind of looks like there's algae dripping off of it and they obviously look like they're a, a bouncer for one of the stalls um but this may be you know one of your only times that you've actually encountered like feeling like the little guy on occasion <laughs> But it doesn't feel the, right. It doesn't right? feel right. No. But for the most part, people people pass pass. You know, they like they part so that your group can walk forward when they see that Rip is is behind you and kind of hurting you uh, forward. So, um, I'm looking on the way on the way there. I'm looking for a couple of things okay. actually, uh, if I can. If I could try to I'll try my best to get maybe a local hedge guide. Mm -hmm. Or a uh, the Huntsman's Clarion or something like that. If anybody, if there's a hobgoblin that's willing to help out with that, um, you so there's there's a, a a stand that looks like it's got all kinds of like maps and charts and there's multiple different globes and things like that. And and the you know the the hand scrawled sign on it says you know we we know where to go basically cool. um and there's a there's a gentleman behind it that is probably about four foot tall um he's got two sets of arms and and a set of legs uh his vest has been cut to allow him to uh for, for the the lower set of arms to stick out of his rib cage too um his skin's kind of a kind of a light violet color uh and he's got ears that like kind of foot, out um and they've got little tufts of fur at the end of them and uh, if you even slow down near his stall he starts chittering at you like <laughs> hey you got somewhere you want to go i know where everything is i can take you where you want to go you want to go somewhere we'll go it only costs you a little bit don't worry it's well worth the price i think that's a great idea and we're going to need somebody because we're going into the hedge and so you're going to be our guy i'm guessing so I need to work out a deal with you. I don't know precisely where we're going yet, but I will a little bit later. I can't take you somewhere if you don't know where you want to go. I can take you anywhere you want to go, but I don't, <laughs> I can't take you somewhere if you don't know where to go. I mean, I could, I could take you just anywhere if you want to go where I want to go, but uh, usually people don't want to pay me to go where uh, I want to go. And uh, I don't go places for people as I say, pay me, thoughts, pay me. Yes, I see. pay me. Okay, so where I will be... As soon as as soon as we know precisely where we're going, I will come back and hire you for certain. Do you know where I could find a goblin contract nearby? What I what you are in goblin market can probably find goblin contracts. Yes. Is there anybody you would recommend? Uh, you could talk to Melisine. She sells many things. Okay, I'll be back for you soon. Be careful then. though. She's sharp negotiator. So am she I. Said, uh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you, you go on. You go find Melisine. Yeah, you come back and tell me what good deal you got. Yeah, yeah. You do that. <laughs> you do that. 
Oh, you just stepped in it. <laughs> Funny flower boy. <laughs> he sees obviously just like, yeah, okay. So if you uh, if you continue to follow Raz, the little air path that's going, uh, it leads you to uh, a stall front that's attached to a building. Um, it's uh, got kind of just a little like stone shack behind it, but it's probably a living quarters or that kind of thing. But the front front part of it is open. Uh, it's got like waist high walls. It's probably maybe 10 by 10, 12 by 12. And it's got a like what looks to be maybe a canvas or linen roof over the top of it. And uh, the strangely enough unlike most of the other um stalls there doesn't appear to be any goods here like there's there's there's, there's no racks there's no shelves there's no globes and pieces of paper um there is ah. a, a table across the back of it and there's a woman sitting behind the table um she looks entirely human she's got she she's uh got dark skin looks like she's maybe from uh african middle eastern um it's not not real you know it's, it's swarthy um uh she's got dark hair that is just it, it probably probably hangs to her her waist um when it's down but it's ar arranged in a lot of loops and braids um and it's very very thick and and curly uh, and she just sits there and kind of watching as people go by. Doesn't seem to be like calling in patrons in the way that some of the other hawkers are. She's selling information. That's why it's <laughs> empty. I guess. <laughs> Not Rip, though. Rip doesn't guess. He just... Rip doesn't guess. <laughs> He's just watching out for the bigger like... guys because this is <laughs> fucking terrifying. <laughs> How do you proceed? This is how it feels to fear. Okay, strange. <laughs> and now the shoe is on the other foot. <laughs> yeah, this is a strange feeling. And she kind of, as you, if your group walks up, she, you know, makes eye contact and smiles and nods, but you know, doesn't doesn't look like she's actively trying to like, oh, come in, come in. Just lovely day. <sighs> Don't talk at once, please. <laughs> Sorry. Can I help you with something? Who had the paper? Who has the paper? And did Ray take it? I'm sorry. No, I don't think I did. Did anybody <laughs> didn't take the paper? <laughs> paper took the paper. On the accountant's desk. <laughs> <laughs> no! So, Somebody remembered that they took it. Who took the paper? So, so loot. Gets it out of his jacket pocket. Yeah. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Shoo! We had a moment. Yeah. He just looks over at her and slides it across the table. He's like, we need to find this. No, I'm wasn't that the price? Confused. Was it the price or was it? Yeah, this is a price because uh, we know what we are looking for, but this is a price. Oh, I yeah. see. This is that deal yeah mm. hmm she picks up the paper and she kind of picks up a pair of glasses from beside her and puts them on and observes the paper through it and takes them back off before she sits it down and looks at you and says so your employer is looking for a location yes say yes say yes yes yeah. And she so standing in the background. She turns, but she doesn't she she turns in her chair and you notice that the chair actually has wheels. It's a it's a wheelchair. And it, it doesn't look like it was built in the mundane world. Um, it's held together by twining vines and uh, the wheels themselves look like they've, they're blackberry brambles that have been uh, woven together to form the wheels. And she, she turns and wheels herself over into a, a kind of a little side area and um, pulls out a box, it's about this big and 
opens it up and pulls out uh, what appears to be a slip of, of notebook paper. I mean, like white paper, blue lines, little red margin thing on the edge. Um, still, got, It's still got the little ruffly edge at the tarp where it looks like somebody's pulled it out of a spiral binder. Um, and she very carefully closes the, the box, which is itself like an ornate jewel box, just beautiful, beautiful construction. And she takes a piece of paper and she slides it across the table to you and picks up the um, slip with all of the columns on it and goes back and puts it in the jewel box and then turns back to you and she's like, uh, oh, you're still here? Is there something else I can do for you? Does anyone pick up the piece of paper that's on the table? Lou picks it up. Uh, it looks like a street address for a main street in in your city, in in Fire River. Um, it's got a zip code and everything. It looks like it's been written by with a blue ballpoint pen ink on a piece of you know, like a high school notebook. Um, it's just got a, a very mundane address. I I'm curious. Know. I'm curious as to why Philbert couldn't just give us this. Philbert didn't have it. I mean, Mr. Clark. Philbert. He also doesn't like to come to the Goblin Market. It's chaotic for his tastes. Yeah, he's a little high strung, huh? He likes things precise. Mm -hmm. You must be very careful in your dealings with him. Well, now she tells us. <laughs> shut, shouldn't waste uh, too much time here, I think. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Lou? The paper bearer? <laughs> um, well, our our job is to get the scepter and the Winter King, and oh, yeah, really? you gotta watch what you say. Uh, <laughs> Lou, she said <laughs> no in the Lou. Golden Market. Don't don't worry, don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. She'll keep her secret for Mom's you. Mom's the prize. word <laughs> for a price. <laughs> she just said that. What's in the uh, market? Yeah. What, what is the what is the cost uh, to make sure that no one else can gather that information or use it that you just hmm. learned? What do you have to offer? Well, I I like secrets. Do you like? How about one of your shiny rocks? I don't know I don't. if rocks are exactly what she's looking for. And you know, he's much going, dealing things, fripperies. Hmm. He's going to. I'm going to use. I'm going to spend a glamour uh, to do Cupid's eye. Okay. So and that's a uh, wits plus weird versus what appears to be a dice pool of like 900. I'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> versus the subject's composure plus weird. Yeah. yeah okay. So um, <laughs> what do Alice I have? Seen, Alice no. seen, she has. She has a weird of four. Yeah, okay. And her composure is also four. So she will yeah. be rolling eight dice. I will roll three. Let's do you this. Roll three. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to spend your Mr. Philbert's uh, I would for point this. now? I don't know if it's going to matter. Like wait it for later. I'm going to wait on that, actually. Okay. Um, well, and because this is, uh, well, I don't know, this is not persuasion, so it's or so perfect. Anyways, anyway, I'll roll. Oh, I got two. Well, check this out. Boom. 10, 10, 2, 10. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, so just so you know, I got a, out of all of eight of those, I got a nine, a nine, and a seven. The rest of them were, were not successes. So I have a total. Got one more 10. Successes. That's three. Fantastic. So you have three I and have three. Okay, so so you equaled their uh, their uh their successes, Melissa's successes yeah. on it. Um, learn one of the subject's desires, specific requests, uh, types of desires, hidden desires, etc., may require extra successes. So, had you gotten, um, had you gotten 
you know, four or five successes where she only got three, um, then I would have allowed you like we did earlier to kind of target what it was that you were looking for. But as such, you get one of their desires. And, and for her, this is the one that's like right on top of her mind right now. Her desire is to get something she has she she wants to get something out of you that she could potentially trade to somebody else later for something else that she can use to trade for something else mm -hmm. so that's it's it's very very mercenary mindset and that is predominant in her mind you kind of get the feeling that's probably like the predominant desire that like this is sitting in a really well-worn place in her psyche yeah. well Look, man, I know you're just trying to do, run a business here. You're just trying to get things Oh, no, done. I am running a business here. Yeah. There's a difference. And you need you need something that oh, you yes. can use to sell to somebody else. Sure. Right? So, look, I think that uh, Lou here would probably be willing to do a favor for you or something like that to keep this on the down low <laughs> in the future if you need it. Right, Lou? For spilling the beans? Well, but considering the fact that you're going off to apparently try to recover something from one of your monarchs, I assume that the chances of Lou being able to come back here and perform a favor for me are, mm, well, let's just say they're not a sure thing. But uh, perhaps one of you has a memory that you'd like to divest yourself of, you know, some some sort of trifling thing that plagues at the back of your mind that you know, it keeps you up at night or disturbs your 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 sense of calm i would be happy to use that as a as a guarantee that this piece of information that you've given me will um, not reach any other ears see it's, it's gonna, kind of a win-win i'm going to do a contract now you're going to do a what a contract a contract okay yeah. delightful which contract are you going to activate which is intuition which is intuition fantastic yeah. okay and then we're going to use the extra die okay fantastic that is wonderful let's it gives see me five dice uh yeah. two tens two t oh delightful man those just it, things, you guys are exploding all over the place uh no just two tens Damn. two tens okay so yeah. those count as two successes but you also get to roll those two successes again to try to get more successes because yeah they, i did and i didn't get anything they didn't so get any more two. okay so no, you got two, two successes yeah, fantastic yeah. and uh which is intuition is versus my composure which we said was four so i'm gonna roll this and i got one success so you beat me uh yeah. you you beat melisine and yeah, so, um you're going to acquire the knowledge of one of her fears yeah so when she says what she said uh, if you have anything for her and stuff i'm going to use that fear against her and say i don't know my biggest fear is that people will know that you are afraid of oh okay and uh yeah. she says um and the the fear yeah. that comes out is is being a, an untrustworthy business person yeah Okay, uh, so when she says, I have anything to you trade, I say, well, it would be stupid of you if, you know, if the rumor went out that you won't want to be trusted. Am I correct? Are you attempting to blackmail me, good No, sir? I'm just stating the facts. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Any businesswoman yeah. would be would be quite, quite difficult Whoa. if someone started... Whoa false rumors about their reliability. No, no I, 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 I would never do that. That's for sure. But the problem is what we're looking for, you know, this is so important. Mm. And if you spread that rumor, you would sound insincere because that's something like this scepter is gone. That would really put you in a bad light. You know what I mean? I look, look, I, my friend here is trying his best just to help everybody in this situation. I assure you, there's a very awkward no need, way of going about it. There, well, there's no, no need to get so upset. Look, hey, you know, we're all just here trying to do our thing. Can I try to do like a persuasion or something to try certainly, to smooth the situation certainly. out? Yeah, why don't you roll me, uh, let's see, how about, uh, would you like to use either presence or manipulation, depending upon how you're going about it, and then uh, combine that with your persuasion? Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that you actually have a specialty. So yes. the, the things that are in the parentheses beside your mm -hmm. skill sets are specialties. So if they're 
um, it pertinent for the the role that's involved, then they give you an extra die for that. So in this case, Pax has a specialization in so sincere. He is just so sincere. And if he's using the fact that he is so sincere in this challenge, then he can can use. So that would give you. So I have a total uh, of seven because I'm going to use presence. I don't want to manipulate. Presence. I'm trying uh, to avoid very, intimidating. I'm trying very, to avoid intimidating in the goblin stick. market. Yeah, so. yeah. No, totally. I'm going to be so sincere about this and just try to, you know, just trying to get by here. Sure. And I, I tell you, out of, I rolled seven dice. I rolled one ten, and that's. <laughs> okay, roll it again. See if it explodes. I nothing else. No, that, so that's I okay. A single success that's on okay. seven dice. I, I got zero success. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So she's like, you're right. You're right. This was probably all a misunderstanding. I'm certain that, that um, if you, if you had something you'd like to trade for this uh, discretion on my part, should you, should you choose, then uh, uh, we could perhaps just consider this a, a, a done deal. Would that be acceptable to you? Yes, absolutely. And what would you like to trade? So I think it's probably likely that at least one of us will survive the situation. So a favor from at a very minimum one of us here. That seems fair one of you will return to me within the fortnight within the next two weeks and perform a favor for me agreed i agree agree okay. and so she um she formulates a very quick very straightforward because she feels she's gotten the better end of this deal um a little pledge and you can you can, all of you who agree to it you can you can sense that this is you because this is like a a negative uh, or not necessarily a, a, a super positive uh, social environment. The pledge doesn't actually have any like super benefit. It's just recognizing that this agreement is is a done deal and it is sealed by the weird. So you feel it sink in. You don't really feel like it's necessarily giving you much other than you know that she is if she tells anybody else about this. Um, about the thing that you said, uh, then you know that their bad things will come to her. And probably based on the, the fear that you bound into it, that people will, will either not believe her or will think that she is um, breaking someone's word in order to do that. So you, you feel pretty, pretty good about the, the thing. Um, she looks at you after, uh, you, you, you take the piece of paper and um, you realize that you're in the hedge. None of you have been to this goblin market before. You, you, you're in the hedge. You don't really know how to get out, to get back to the real world where the address is. Yeah, we might Mr. need the help. Mr. Clark, <laughs> Mr. Clark let you in, so you didn't have to really worry about it on your way in, but he didn't really give you a contingency plan for getting back out. Hey, Pax, what about your buddy? Yeah, why don't we swing by there and see if they can help us uh, get out of here. Okay. That's where we're trying to go. So you're going back to the, the guide's uh, booth? Oh, uh, here comes another deal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's very excited to see you back. He's like, okay, you know where you need to go now? Yeah. You pay me, you pay me lots, I take you there. Yes? Yes. 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 Let's yes. Uh, let's make a deal. Let's. Oh, oh, delightful. Delightful. I like to you start the bidding. What what will it take for you to lead us back to our um, home area, our freehold area? To your, to your to our oh. freehold. Oh, oh, you want the pathway out to Fire River? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I uh you want safe pathway or dangerous pathway? I can do either. Dangerous pathway is cheaper. Let's do safe pathway. Safe pathway? Okay. okay. Uh safe pathway. Uh oh oh. Oh, oh, I, 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 I like the rocks. Look at the rocks. I think a rock. <laughs> Shiny rocks. Oh, here you are. Let's see. Oh, I'll like let you. How about this? You make an ultra save for us, and I'll give you your pick. And he holds up three different crystals. I make it super safe for you. You give me all three of them. There I you guarantee go. you get to the gateway safe. You give me all three of them. Yes. Through the gateway. Through the gateway. Through the gateway. Absolutely. Course, Here you course, are. Of course. Okay. 
and so they, they gather up all three of the of the rocks and they click clack them in their hands they're very very excited about this uh, <laughs> oh, no. and then they point over to the uh to to across the way and there is what appears to be a stone archway um so it's it it's broken in the middle um so it's it's basically just kind of two pieces like this now and the flagstone at the center but it's still standing because it's been covered up with ivy so much that it's literally holding the the arch in place and mm -hmm. and they he the the hub leads you over there and uh said this this get you safe home and he slaps the the uh archway so hard that it, it just shakes it you wouldn't think i mean this thing is this hob is tiny but he slaps the the arch and it just shakes the both the things and sure enough there it just kind of it's as the ivy leaves some of them are starting to fall down to the ground from the impact of this um the air in the gateway area kind of does the kind of Wayne's World thing, yeah. and uh, and you can instead of the instead, instead of the uh, the other side of the Goblin Market that you could see through it before, now you can see a, a, like a manicured lawn, and there's like a fountain with some ducks in it. Um, those of you who spent some time in the downtown area, like uh, Lou, the you know you've you've gone through the parks and that kind of thing at night, um, you 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 recognize this is obviously the main city park in uh, in the the downtown area of, of the city. Say okay. There you go. Uh, and he like oh. tries to start pushing you through it. Like he's like, <laughs> you got to go through. That's the deal. You got to go through now. Bye bye. I Have wait fun. till all of them go through go, and then I'll go through. Go, yeah. go. I, I just <laughs> remembered time moves differently in the hedge, right? You can. Yeah. You said long and it's winter time. Yeah. So yeah. This is going to be fun. Yeah, I go through. <laughs> I go through. Okay, mm -hmm. so so despite the fact that when you looked through it, it looked like spring. I mean, it looked like beautiful green daffodils starting to grow, the ch cherry blossoms starting to fall a little bit. The minute you go through that pathway, you are knee deep in snow. It is just, you know, just and and your your hoodie raz is not anywhere adequate for this kind of weather um you're all you're all pretty 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 chilly but you are safely through the gateway and if you turn to look back there is the there is a a, a steel um arch that uh you know was some sort of art installation back in the 1920s or that kind of thing kind of art deco um th the gates on it um are in place and there's uh ivy growing up them so it's obvious that those gates did not open to let you through uh, but you are through them and you are you are in the city uh proper now oh okay <sighs> that was a ride man maybe just at the end of it uh you can hear on the on the blizzardy Ugh. winds that are coming through bye bye <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss that little guy. I love that guy. Uh, I hate but, goblin but I think, markets. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that goblin got the best of the deal. Just make sure we return in a fortnight, at least one of us, Lou. Yeah, one of you guys that <laughs> agreed. Anyway. Um, okay, so you now have, Lou, you have this piece of notebook paper with a street address on it. You are standing knee deep in a snowbank in the middle of uh, the city park. Uh, how would you like to proceed? Uh, I'll share the address with everybody so they know what the address is. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, hang on just a second. I want to kind of look through... Uh, so Raz, because you keep up with where people are and what people are, it's important that you know, you know, like cross streets and things like that. You know that this is, uh, it's, it's in town, not in the downtown area, but it's, it's probably a 15 minute walk away or so. Um, it's, it's, 
in an area that's semi-industrial, um, not not residential uh, businesses, but not like the downtown businesses where there's a lot of traffic. This places that's got things like um, industrial parks and uh, storage complexes and warehouses and things like that. Not you know just not not like super industrial like construction stuff, but just you know you only go there if you got something to do out there. Okay. Oh, great. The warehouse district. Nothing bad ever happens there. No. <laughs> the warehouse district? No, it's always good. I know where this is when, when, when I look at the paper. I, I say, I know where this is. And follow me. Let's, let's, we may as well get going. It's really cold. Like, let's go. Um, maybe, no. we'll, maybe we'll pass like a coffee shop or something that's open where we can warm up on the way. I'm hoping, but, you know. You know, I... Look, I'm not into like conspiracies or any of that stuff, right? But like, man, there's some weather witches doing stuff, I think, here. And we've got, okay, no, no offense to my fellow winter court or to my friends who are winter courtiers here, but, uh, you know, Purdue, this is a pretty convenient thing, right? Like, this storm is a pretty convenient freak thing that weather witches are doing. And, and Purdue's using it maybe to hang on to his court for a while. I think we're probably going to run into a thing or two when we get here. So let's just be ready for that trickery and secrecy going on. Well, well, Pax, I, I, I'll let you in on a secret. I uh, I heard through the grapevine you know, that the chatter is that Purdue lost the set uh, gambling a bit uh, prodigiously. So uh, I agree with you that this is probably cover, but more cover that they don't have it than holding on to power. Well, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah because I heard that he hasn't been seen for a month. Almost a month. Well, yeah. Some of my summer court friends are, are thinking of hunting for you down and, uh, you know, working them over. Well, I mean, you know, the problem is, is that winter court stays and spring court doesn't come. And if spring court doesn't come, well, then summer court has a bit of a problem. And if summer court has a problem, well, then autumn court has a problem. We've got a big problem here. And regardless of what it is, Purdue's got a big problem. And you're looking at it, I think. Well, also, just to let you, you all know that my sources are also telling me that one of the courts is trying to frame uh the winter court for these storms so yeah. while these are winter storms i don't know if it's because of the winter court i think that there's something larger at play here than than just winter not wanting to or being able to pass on the power yeah the word on the you know amongst the street folk is the gover a government machine that controls the weather has been sabotaged and that's what causing all of this storm. So it might not even be a conspiracy with Purdue. Mm. Might not have anything to do with him. I wonder if he was maybe even kidnapped. I think it's one of the bigger face, stronger ones. Oh, you know, one every, of the true, one of the true ones, the powerful ones. Like the bird said, man to everything, turn, turn, turn. There's a yeah. season. Well, oh, for now. Turn. If they can, if he can destroy Fire City, he has gotten rid of a lot of problems. I think all of these are really good ideas um, and really good things to contemplate. But for now, can we turn, turn, turn towards getting to this address? Because I'm cold. <laughs> I see what you did there. I like that. There's a time for every purpose, man. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of this snow. So yeah. he's at this point, you guys have been walking as you're talking and, uh, you know, kind of it's slow going because, you know, you're you're where it's not snow, it's ice and the wind is just blowing really hard and that kind of thing. But you guys managed to wait and make your way out to kind of the outskirts here. And uh, it, the address is for a quick store storage unit. Uh, it's one of those ones that 
or uh, the storage facilities. It's one of those ones that has a big chain link fence around it. Um, it's got a gate at the front where the where you pull in with a car, um, and it's got uh, you know the keypad that's uh, so you can the people that mm -hmm. rent there can put in their keypad. There, there's no office or that kind of thing here. It looks like it's all um, monitored. It's you know it's uh, there's big signs that say like you know 24 hour. Uh, camera security kind of thing and it's a uh, it's rows of um, storage units that are made out of like corrugated metal and uh, each person like padlocks their own and they all open out onto the outside within this uh, chain link fence you know probably six seven foot tall chain link fence with razor wire around the top of it um, and there's, uh, it doesn't look like anybody else has, has uh, walked in here in a while because there's no, there's no um, driveway marks up to the fence or, or, you know, footsteps up to the fence. Uh, if there has been any, the storm has covered them, covered them up. So it's basically, you look like you're the first ones coming here in a while. Uh, on that note, does it say anything else about the address? Uh, instance, there, a locker yeah. number? There are there are two sets of numbers, one down in the left corner and one down in the right corner. The left corner says Q17. The right corner is a series of six numbers. Ooh, the lock. The, lock. Yeah. the combination, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, when we get there, maybe I can see if I can spot who's been to this storage garage if they haven't crew this way. But as we know, they can come in and not even step foot here. So different ways to get to different places, man. But we can check it out when we get there before so, we go in. So how do you decide to approach the, like I said, there's a chain link fence that's probably six, mm -hmm. seven feet tall. Uh, the closest of the buildings inside that is, is a good, you know, two car pathway so that two cars could drive around each of the buildings. Is there a lock to this gate? Uh, the, the gate appears to be uh, locked via the keypad. So it looks like you drive oh. up, you insert the key, put in the keypad number, and it opens the gate oh, for see. you. That's probably those numbers. Is, is it the, the camera, is this pointed at the keypad, or can I yes. see if it works yes, or stuff? There's... Because I worked with security. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, why don't you roll me a, um, let's see, uh, roll me whatever your maybe? tool is for uh, intelligence plus, uh, do you have a, a skill that would apply to this? Sorry, I sat down your character sheet. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, investigation, maybe, but sure, that's, tra that's that's tracking. That's for tracking. I oh, think. Uh, that your specialty is in yeah, tracking. Okay. So you can use investigation for any purposes, but if you're using it for tracking someone, then you get a bonus die to it. Okay. It's okay, not a limiter. It. So intelligence plus investigation. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, eight, ten, uh, eight, yeah. Oh, great. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, you, you, you notice, you can tell that they're the, the cameras, um, they look like they're staring exactly where they should be, right to the, the keypad area and the approach. But you can also tell that the wire to the camera has been cut. Excellent. And the little the little green light that should be on top to show that it's that it's working is not on. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go up to the little lens of the camera. And okay, I'm the going camera to is is on the security building, and, and oh, I'm it, sorry, I thought it was above the. I'm yeah, sorry. no, it's it's like it's probably ten feet up, uh, so that they can get a really good look at the whole entryway in case somebody's trying to leave with somebody else's motorcycle or something. Okay, sorry. But, yeah, no, 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 it's fine. It's, there's other there's other shiny stuff here. I mean, there if nothing else, there's icicles hanging all over the place here. The chain link fence is just like along the edge of it is just like pfft, with icicles. Shiny. And it's been this way for how long? Uh, this big storm has been going on for about three weeks now. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to use the ice to try to I'm gonna use my cloth to try to shine it up a little bit. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and you're going to use do... reflections of the past? Yep. Reflections okay. of... So roll me your wits plus weird. That used to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is important. So I'm going to spend into this one. I'm going to spend a glamour to add to this roll because I think this is important. Thing. Okay. So I have a single success and eight. 
Okay. Um, you, there, there has been no one in or out of here in the last week. So not, not a single soul, not a um, human, not a changeling. Occasionally that there, there was, you know, like a bird that, that landed on the, on the fence. Uh, but even that's not what you expect. This storm has just been keeping everybody out for anything other than necessities. Uh, so it's a while ago. Yeah. yeah. How high is the snow? I mean, the fence is, is it at six feet high? Yeah, six, the fence is uh, six or seven feet tall. The, the snow drift up, up to it. I mean, it, it looks like if you were, if you, you didn't have your weight, you could probably just walk up the, the snowbank and jump over. But you're, when you step into the snow, it, you, it crunches you down. And it's not a, it's not a dense enough like snowpack. It's a drift. I could, I could try to get through this, man, if you want me to give it a shot. Oh, what if I, what if I bash it? Could I, you know, bust the lock on the fence? Oh, sure. Get in? Yeah. Oh yeah. Go, go ahead and give me a, uh, give me a strength plus brawl. Are you going to use a weapon or are you just going to use your fist? Uh, no, that'll be fine. My fist will be fine. Brawl. Okay. So that would be strength yeah. plus brawl would be five. Okay. So roll me five die. Okay, there's one ten, one eight. Okay. Uh, then there's two and and two sixes. So. Okay, so you're eight. Reroll the ten. Six. Yep, reroll the ten. That's seven. Okay, so you've got two successes. Yeah, you uh you the 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 metal on this is so cold, uh that the the uh, uh the lock area just snaps. Uh, under your under your massive draconic strength uh the the gate is still closed but it and it doesn't open this way so you're pretty lucky because the um the snow drift uh would stop it if it was a, a swinging gate kind of thing but it pulls back along the fence so you you look at it and you think you could probably with with enough strength you could probably now that the lock is is broken you could probably just kind of roll it to the side if you if you put your back into it Okay, so I'll open the gate. <laughs> okay. Uh, now Camera's broken. No one's gonna know. <laughs> right. gonna know. There you go. Um, yeah, and there's nobody else out on the street. I mean, occasionally a couple couple streets down where there's like a main crossroad, you'll see a car go through. But they're they're going through obviously slow to the point where you're just like, yeah, no, the, nobody's gonna bother me. Yeah. Um, so the the buildings have big letters on them, and they're at each. Um, crossroad you know it'll point down to what what letter is and it doesn't take you guys too long to find the one that has a q um it's it's the end building uh, uh on a uh a series of what looks to be big ones they have the big like garage door style opening as well as a a human sized door to go into so it looks like stuff where people people could store like cars or big furniture or that kind of thing Thing. And and pretty quick, quickly you find Q nineteen. I think you said nineteen. Q nineteen. Um, it it's you know just said has seventeen. Looks just like Q eighteen and Q seventeen and Q sixteen. Well, this must be the place. Fingers crossed, it's climate controlled. <laughs> Raz is like, I just want a sweater. I do. <laughs> I'm wee. <laughs> The wind just goes right through me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, okay, so how would you like to go about entering? I wonder if we can hear, if we can try to listen through the front to oh. see if it sounds like anything inside. Ooh, that is a very good question. Can I use um, a contract for hearing? Oh, oh yeah. yes, you, you have a contract for hearing. Let's see, what does Lou have here? Oh, it's for like an animal, like beast sense. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Sure, Beast King Census, sure, definitely. So uh, you're going to, be, so you're activating that, it, um, that contract works specifically um, with a particular kind of animal. And so you're basically adopting the hearing of a wolf because there are no wolves around for you to touch to activate the catch. Um, you're going to need to spend two glamour to do that. Uh, it's an instant action, and you're going to roll me your wits plus your weird. So that would be four. Mm -hmm. All right, and use I those cat ears. 
<laughs> I got a 10 and two eights. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you got three successes, reroll the 10. And I got another eight. Okay, fantastic. You got four successes. You, I, I'm going to give you actually an additional, normally this would give you a plus two bonus to your wit rolls for perception for the rest of the scene. I'm going to actually give you a plus three bonus because you got so many successes on this. So anytime that you're rolling perception for the next scene, um, you're going to get three extra die to roll in that. Now, would you like to roll a perception roll now to see if you can hear anything going on inside the, the building? Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, perception, perception, you are going, let me double check. I believe it's wits plus composure. Uh, I wrote this down. Uh, we're just gonna run with that. Uh, give me a wits plus composure. And then an additional three. And then, we're, yeah, so exactly. And if you have any, um, oh no, sorry, not wits plus composure, wits plus investigation. Um, what was it? Oh, that's same number. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, great. And do you have a specialty that um, within in investigation that might apply? Mm, scent. Scent? Okay. So, yeah. So you're listening rather than sending. So you don't get the bonus on that. Okay. How many successes did you get on that? Uh, two successes. Fantastic. Okay. So you lean in. Are you, are you listening at the, the person size door or the car size door? Uh, the person size door person size door okay so you you listen in there and you can hear there's something there there's something moving around and it sounds like there might be somebody talking to themselves or grumbling like like just a bit kind of a, a you know like ongoing like somebody talking to themselves but they don't seem real pleased with it and there is the sound of things like moving around like if you bumped into something the sound that it might make kind of moving like a chair kind of makes that little squeal when you bump into it that kind of thing and uh wait, give me give me one more roll uh same thing for this, this perception mm -hmm. yep and remember to include your extra three die i got three successes Nice. Okay. You can tell it sounds like there's, it's not just like the sound of two footsteps. It, it sounds like there's one voice, but more than, more than one set of footsteps moving around in there. So I, I relay this information like in a, in a whisper to the rest of the party. So do we want to bust in? <laughs> I don't know about all that, man. Maybe we should. I was going to offer to bust down the door if you want. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe we should create some kind of distraction that might get their attention outside of here or something first that they come out instead of us going in. Or we can actually take the keypad on the lock and, you know, crunch the numbers. Wait, we well, don't want to run in. We do have the combo. They're waiting for this to happen, man. <laughs> We can always send we can always send Lou first. We can always send Lou first. Well, what if we <laughs> I got an idea, man? This is great. He pulls out his singing bowl again. <laughs> oh. uh, I don't what the shit this is. Uh, everybody hide. Yeah, you're I, high. That's right. You are high. That's no, right. Hide. I'm not high, man. Yeah. I've been high in a long time. Everybody hide. You've never been low in a long oh, time. Oh, like as in actually hide ourselves? Yeah, like hide. Oh, so I, He's like so in that I, really like quiet whisper that's not loud enough for like people who, people would have to be really eavesdropping to hear him, but it's like that kind of theatrical whisper, <laughs> like just trying to like make a spoil. Like, hide, <laughs> man. <laughs> Um, I, I have just be where it's a snowstorm. There is, there is I don't nothing know. in yeah. here. I mean, it's building road snow. Yeah. That's, yeah, what like, that's, what, that's what I was thinking too. It's like, this is a parking lot. You can like hide around the corner of the can, building. Yeah, yeah, hide around the corner. Oh, can I, I have a question. Um, yeah. I have Shadow Patch. Can I share that with anybody or is it just me? Unfortunately, no. Uh, Shadow Patch, well, let me double check that. Um, uh, it has been a while since I've looked at that skill, so I want to make absolutely sure before I tell you. This can't fail, guys. There's no this way. Can't fail. I mean, <laughs> I, I got a crazy idea. We could pile up snow and hide behind it. 
<laughs> what if everybody just acts like a tree, man? That's a horrible idea. We're snow, snow, yeah, snow people. We're just snow people. We're just snowmen. And, and this yeah, is you patch. not being high? It has been so long since I've done that sort of junk, man. I, I appreciate you, but I'm going to ask you to maybe not bring up that stuff. That's my past, man. That's not now. Wow. It's changed. It's changed. He's, he's, you got to change. You got to leave room for people to change and blow your, that's what'll blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the only real realistic way you think in this area for you to hide in a natural method, unless you have a supernatural ability to do so, is basically to just walk around the edge of the building and hide behind, you know, hide hide along the side of it. Yeah. Um, luckily, this is at the edge. This is the last unit on a building, so you will still only be maybe 10, 15 feet away. But you know, you and you luckily won't be able to watch. there's no snow, so we don't make any tracks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can Perfect. catch yeah, no can, tracks. You can definitely <laughs> see the path that the six of you took to get to the door <laughs> if you look back it's obvious that like and and the the like rips footprints are like this big and uh Lou's are kind of like lupine shaped uh so you know it's it's kind of weird it looks like he had a whole menagerie coming up yeah. to the door here. i mean it could look like he was walking a dog yeah i'm gonna yeah. just sit, i'm gonna sit by where <laughs> the footsteps are I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of just stand there where the footsteps are when they all get around the side of the building. I'm gonna pull out my singing bowl. All right. You can't lose the singing bowl. Uh, okay. okay. So you activate your singing bowl and you're you're making it and it's making this wonderful sound. And inside the building, things go silent. I I kind of jumped the gun on there, Lou, but you you heard well enough to to be able to kind of keep an ear on what's going on. As soon as that that sound is going on it just goes completely silent well they're listening <laughs> um, oh. hey man are you inside Nicks. oh god this was your diversion <laughs> come on out it's just me man i just want to talk and <laughs> Uh, Lou, do you want to try and hone in a little bit more on what's going on inside so you can see what the response is to this? <laughs> yes. Okay, roll me your, your perception again. Anybody else has a has a perception they want to roll on this? Please feel free to jump on that bandwagon. I would like to also kind of roll like a perception just visually to see if anybody's trying to get the drop on us. Sure. Yeah, there. Go ahead. I, and got, roll. I got two successes. Okay. Yeah, you can hear that what sounds like curious sound it doesn't appear to be coming any closer to the door but that that kind of muttering is gotten a little like there's kind of like an inquiring up note to the end of the the mutters no successes no successes yeah no it is yeah, nobody is safe oh, wait wait there's a bird might be trying to get a jump on you nope it just flew by okay I'm not even trying. I'm looking around so people don't notice us, basically. Yeah, yeah there's nobody on the street. The storm no. is basically, you're very, very fortunate in that. Like, yeah. your, your, your uh, shenanigans are getting no notice whatsoever. Yeah, but the hedge, <laughs> the hedge is right, right over there in a way. And both of us were big. So that's true. I'm just saying. Makes just you a saying. Little, little nervous. Yeah, I'm, st I'm saying way beyond. Way so beyond. So it was like, they're curious. I don't know if it's curious as in they're not coming out because it's weird. Yeah, they don't appear to be getting it. They're, they're kind of in the back of the of the storage unit, whatever that sound is and the, the footsteps. Um, it doesn't appear to be coming closer. So now I'm going to just completely stop the sound altogether because I think that's even weirder. Like the fact that that was going so <laughs> regularly. Now there is no sound at all. Now they're going to wonder what the fuck happened to the sound. So uh, Lou, you can hear they just kind of they continue kind of muttering. After a while, it gets less like what was that, and more just like going back to the kind of like <laughs> that was going on. It didn't work. Can I? Can I? Uh, that was a surefire method. I thought. Yeah, me too. Let's use the combination. Can, well, can I can I again use the primordial? Can I talk to the air again? Can, can we find out from the air in the room like what's sure. going on? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Go ahead and make that roll for me. All right. So I'm like, okay, let's try this because I think it's a good idea for us to be safe. But 
I want to get in there because you know I'm cold. I'm kind of like <laughs> you're like I'm I'm, I'm like trying I'm trying to stay by by Rip and and Nikki. What's your character's name again? Lou. Lou. I'm trying to stay because Lou's a little fuzzy. I'm like <laughs> trying to like get as much warmth as I can. Like, hey, um, dude, come here. Let me borrow your warmth. <laughs> please. Um. So, all right. Okay. So you're so socialized. socialized. All right. Socialize, socialize, socialize. Sorry. Two. All right. So that's three. Okay. I have one eight. One eight. Okay. Um, so you, the wind that you're talking about is outside here and they, it tells you it, nobody's been through here in the last day. Nobody's been through here in the last two days. Nothing, nothing's gone on out here. No people, no, no people, no cars, no people, no nothing. All right, but it can't, it can't like go underneath the door and, and find out what's oh, going on so with you the can air inside. Convince it to, to kind of deviate in its path and, and go to an area that it normally has not been going to because it's been, you know, locked out of the, of the, of the outside, basically. Um, why don't you roll me a, um, a manipulation plus persuasion roll. Manipulation plus persuasion. All right, so that means if manipulation is four and persuasion is two, I get six dice? Six die, yep. And you can, right. if you would like to, you can use your extra die that you got from Philibert. Yeah. I'm throwing it Why in not? there. Throw it in there. I have one eight. One eight. <laughs> okay. well, so it's like the wind, yeah, just this little whisper of wind is like, Okay, I go in. I go. I go in. I be right back. <laughs> and just a, a moment later, it comes back and says, "There's something in there. There's something in there." Yeah. Oh. It's that big. was completely it's helpful. Big. <laughs> it's big. It's big. Something in there. It's big. Never okay. seen anything like it. Never okay. seen anything like it. And then, and then it fucks the hell off. All right. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can I see that here? <laughs> I, I say thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So did that? Did the rest of the party hear that? Uh, yeah. You, you, it whispered it to you, but you can communicate okay. that to them. All if right. Like. So, so the wind just said it's there's something in there. It's big and it's something it's never seen, and it left like it was really glad to be going. Uh, I suggest we just open the door because we have to go in there one way or another i i agree we could just intimidate it right <laughs> we have the numbers just punch the numbers and open the door friendly okay. open the door is somebody gonna punch the numbers into the keypad then yeah okay so you punch the numbers into the keypad um you can hear a click as the you know mechanism near the doorknob on the person sized door uh unlocks and the door appears to be unlocked now. Oh, are you going to just open it or are you going to- I am nowhere. I am nowhere near the entrance of this. Yeah, I'm open opening it. it. Okay. Do I'm it. away from this entrance. <laughs> so when you, okay, noted. When you, when you open it, at first glance, it looks like a typical storage building. I mean, there's stacked cardboard boxes. Um, there's, a, there's some stuff that looks like it's been shrink wrapped. So that's like on a pallet. Um, after you look at it for a little bit, you realize it's like supplies. There's like MREs. Um, there's uh, obviously some camping type gear. Uh, the pallet is bottled water. Um, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it looks like basically like a um, prepper's a, heaven. A prepper's heaven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, you don't see any firearms or that kind of thing um, right off, although there is what looks like it might be a gun safe uh, to uh, on one end. Um, and but there's so the the building the the room that you open up to is probably fifteen by fifteen, and about halfway into it, the the um, there is a uh, like a curtain. Um, it, it's just like a, a cloth. Uh, it looks like it's made out, not cloth. It looks like it's made out of visqueen. Um, and in the back area, looks like it's more open. Um, there I, is I just I just yell, hey, Purdue, Purdue, are you in there? So there is a voice that comes from the back. And uh, it, it sounds 
not human. If, if you can imagine the sound that a robot might make if combined with um, a clanking set of cans and a, a and and maybe you know wind chimes and also maybe the the sound of like one of those mouth harps that go no 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 um the that like forms the resonance uh and 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 it's like who, who's that who, who who's who there who 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 that who there who who Ooh. and there's a shape moving behind this like this queen curtain um that is looks like it takes up the majority of the width of the back of the room it's kind of indis indistinct because of that um it looks like a great big couch like i mean it's or or maybe a like a minivan or something okay ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh. i maybe i stepped in it this time uh <clears throat> again Who's there? Uh, I tell her, uh, well, it's Rip. You called? Who, who, who? Rip, Rip, what? Rip, thing? Rip, Rip, what? Who? Rip, what? For those of you, uh, the the Winter Court here, um, the, uh, you've talked directly with Purdue before. This does not sound like Purdue's voice. Purdue has a very quiet, uh, sedate, no, no real um, intonation kind of voice androgynous um this does not sound anything like them does not sound like any person you've ever heard before that's not purdue not whatever okay. it is i can tell you it's not purdue i know okay i know that hey that guys, goes back what's to that, going on in there that goes back to that whole conspiracy theory thing we were led into a trap <laughs> we're given <laughs> wrong directions so as you uh, kind of stand around the 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 outside door here, um, whatever is on the other side of the Visqueen starts halumphing forward, and that's the only like it's not it's not a smooth sound. It have you ever seen a walrus move itself where it's just like rump? It starts halumphing forward, and this mass whatever it is is probably seven foot tall takes up the space you know and most of the space of the storage storage unit in the back and it's coming towards the vix queen it makes like one humph toward you 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 guess maybe two more harumphs and it's going to be through the vix queen i'm ready to pull down the door again or the shaders or you know the opening oh okay <laughs> I, I, i'm not i'm not Slam moving away door back shut there. yeah i'm not moving away i just standing and i'm ready to you know close and run because if it's bigger than me it's dangerous. What's going on in there, guys? Everything good? Everything yeah, sure. Good? Yeah, sure. But come, come, come over. <laughs> take, take, take your bowl with you. Take your bowl with you. So is, is there like any space on top of boxes and stuff to like sure. move across and like pull back the, the vis queen to sure, see? Sure, definitely. Uh, roll, me a, uh, roll me a dexterity plus uh let's do are you going to be discreet about it or are you just going to like make a, a mad fashion dash for it i'm going to be discreet okay so roll me dexterity plus stealth add in any specializations you might have stealth okay i've got three successes fantastic you are so smooth you make a leap up to the top you jump like onto one uh the the pallet and then the stack the, what looks to be the sturdiest stack of cardboard boxes and you're up there and you pull pull back you kind of use your your lupine uh strength and pull back the visqueen just falls to the ground and what you see behind it is i think going to be apparent to you pretty quick here if it is not already uh can you guys see that no okay so um where well, what on, are we just, looking at i i just realized that i don't know that uh we have any way to show you so what i'm i'm going to <clears throat> share, share screen on, on zoom if you need to mm -hmm. oh is there okay i'm just i don't gonna know if that's going to mess up there. I'm gonna hold this up to you. Or in Discord, maybe. It looks like this. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yes, the okay. clockwork. 
this thing is cobbled together um, with all kinds of different things. Um, there's a bicycle. Uh, there's what looks like what could have been one of the sheds from the um, from the goblin market. Um, it's there's probably a refrigerator. You think maybe in the back um, some children's toys. Uh, there are some body parts sticking out of it. Like it's it's got two big um, front leg kind of things that it's using to harumph itself forward, but they're mismatched. One of them looks like it might've been from like some sort of an elephant, but it's actually made out of plant matter. And then the other one is like leonine. It looks like a, almost like a griffin's claw with really sharp claws and stuff, totally mismatched. And it's using it to, to pull itself forward. And you notice, um, give me a perception check. So if you would all please roll a, um, uh, wits plus uh, investigation. Um, if you have any visual based uh, specialties, you can throw them in there. If you want to use your filberts you thing, you can throw it in there. I You're guess. just kind of overwhelmed by the sheer amount of junk this thing is made out of. I have three oh. successes. <laughs> what did you call for a wits? A wits plus what? Which plus investigation? Okay. One success. One Yay. success? Yeah. One success. Yeah. No successes. Yeah. No Two successes. Two, so, Two successes. So, okay. So, Jeez, you guys, man. those of you who got one success at least, you recognize that mm -hmm. this this thing, like, none of this thing is actually itself. It's, it's, it's all just a construct that's, that's, it looks, and it looks like it's mostly been slapped together where its own claws could have reached to place things on it. Um, those of you who got two successes will note that there is a good um, combination of both mundane uh, garbage detritus kind of stuff and things that would have been pulled out of the hedge, um, goblin-esque kind of things. Um, and uh, Lou, you who got three observances, you notice right behind this thing's shoulder, there is what appears to be the fire scepter stuck into it, but around the handle of the fire scepter is still a very, very pale white fist gripping it and oh. about this much of an arm. And then what probably was blood at some time in the past, um, but has long since stopped bleeding. So I look back at the group and I'm like, um, I found the monarch and this, or at least part of him and oh. the scepter. Man, I told you he wasn't going to let go. <laughs> okay, could you guys all give me one more um, a perception test, please? One more. That was cold, man. That was cold. Okay, what are we rolling? Two, three, Wits yeah. plus perception. Okay. Any, uh, add in any visual based specialties Six. if you'd like. If you haven't used Philibert's bonus, you can use it there. Three successes. Oh, wow. Okay. Gray's like, I see this. Um, two successes, a nine and a 10, and I rerolled the 10. I still fantastic. say two successes. Two. Okay. Two. two successes. One, one success. One. Okay. So those of you You're who cold. got one success, you notice that beyond the, um, the thing, whatever this thing is, you can see a pair of beige boots on the floor. Um, you know, kind of stuck out this way. Uh, those of you who get two successes, you realize that there is a, uh, a a body laying on the floor that you can see its feet sticking out. And those of you who get three successes, you can see that there is not only a body, but there is a beige mask that is off to the other side um, and it is blood splattered. Um, I think he's gone. <clears throat> and this thing is harumphing its way. It 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 is no. There's now nothing, no visqueen between the two of you. Um, it looks, and it 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 looks, and it's it's it it doesn't seem angry. Um, it looks curious, and it's but it it leans over and it and it is like looking at you and like. If, if you have, have any of you guys like pulled weapons or do you have anything like in your hands or, or that kind of thing? A singing bowl. 
Tinsky's singing bowl, <laughs> or uh, Raz, sorry, Pax has got his singing bowl. He he catches eye of Pax's singing bowl, and he says, and and the thing says, bowl, bowl, bowl is like bowl is bowl is mine. Give me back my bowl. Why you take my bowl from me? Give me my bowl. And hey, it starts yeah, moving let's forward. chill a second. Chill the bowl, out. Bowl is mine. Why you steal my bowl? Can Why I try to persuade it? Bowl? Is it sentient enough so I could try? try. It's, let's, it's, let's try it. In words. Why not? So, um, so actually, this is a two-parter that I'm going to try, okay. try to do. I'm going to first ask it, when, when did I steal this bowl from you? Bowl mine. That's I like bowl, okay. bowl mine. So I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to uh, add a, um, I'm going to add that extra die to this because okay. I can do that for persuade. Okay. I'm going to add a glamour to this as well. Okay. Um, and so my pool for this is uh, manipulation four. Okay. Plus two, plus I'm trying to persuade. So okay. three. Okay. But I'm not being sincere right now, so I'm not going to add okay. this to the sincere. <laughs> That's fair. I am too scared to be sincere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying. I'm going to try to convince it. Basically, my my real goal here is I want to try to convince it to that we're not a th we're not going try to convince it to not hurt us. Okay. To try to communicate with us. Okay. Doubtful, but that's why I'm rolling a bunch of dice. Let's see. Okay, roll them dice. Well, I got out of all those dice two successes. Okay, uh, let me. Which roll is perfect. That's exactly it. what I did. <laughs> roll for it. Oh, I got two exploding successes and a nine, and one more success, and one more success, perfect. and one more success, Woo! and a five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's, it doesn't really seem interested in what you have to say. It is concentrating entirely on that bowl in your hands, although it does occasionally flicker glances to other people um, in, in, in a very assessing kind of way. I'm going to take the bowl and I'm going to throw it out the front door. Oh. Out the... Oh. Okay. Why? Just so it has just to go right past all those oh. oh. guys. Oh. Why you throw my bowl? And it just I get out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I get out of the way too. I'm moving away. You suddenly have an animatronic locomotive heading your direction. You do not think this thing could move this fast or this dexterously. It has gone from galumping like a water, like a like a walrus, to moving like a, a sinuous snake. It's just, and it 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 doesn't attack you as you go by but if you do not actively try to get out of its way it will bowl you over without any hesitation whatsoever so does everyone try to move out of its way or yeah. can i stop it yeah can, can, I'll move I, out of the way. can i run after the bowl i'm trying to get the bowl i want to get sure. the bowl back yeah definitely <laughs> uh, let's let's set this up as a con uh, contested um, so what you're going to roll me is your, um, because you're, you're very small and I assume you're using like speed and dexterity. Mm -hmm. I'm using my speed. Um, okay. So what is your speed? My speed. And I looked at it and I know it's a lot, but I have to, I don't, where is it at again? Oh, I'm that's sorry. okay. It's, it's above your contracts on your second page. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, da -da 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 -da. Above the contracts. Speed 10. 10. Okay, so this thing also has a speed of 10. So it's moving about the same time uh, speed as you are. So let's move, let's uh, roll your uh, dexterity plus athletics versus its dexterity plus athletics, um, which is going to be Five. three plus two, three plus two. This has a specialty in foot chase. So I'm going to apply it in this situation because it seems like it's a, an appropriate thing. So I'm going to be rolling a total of uh, six dice. Okay, I'm rolling five. Okay, uh, and I got one success plus a ten, so I'll roll again. So that's two plus uh, a two. So I've got two successes. How many did you get? One. Okay, so it gets to the bowl just ahead of you, um, and it snatches it up in its the, the, the foot that looks like a lion's claw. Um, you can still make an attempt if you'd like to grab it out of its hand. Well, well they're doing this. 
is there a way to like uh, go for the, the the scepter that's stuck to the back of it there? Sure, yeah, definitely. You want to take the offer, basically kind of a an opportunity to kind of grab onto it as yeah. it goes by. And yeah. I also right, posted exactly. that I wanted to try to mount it. I wanted to try to jump on it. You wanted to try to jump it like, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic, okay. So okay. as so, you're going past, Oh, go ahead. Go so ahead. yes, I do want to try to snatch it back if snatch I can. Snatch it back. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna let's let's go ahead and being so we did the the race between the two of you. Let's go ahead and uh, get the two people who are doing something as it goes yeah, by, yeah. and we'll come back to to the snatching it out of its hands. Sure, sure. Okay. So, um, Alex, you are attempting to grab the scepter. Uh, as it mm -hmm. goes past. Okay, fantastic. Why don't you give me a um, dexterity plus athletics? Uh, if you have an appropriate um, specialty, you can throw that in there. Okay. Uh, two successes out of the four, and one of them's a 10. Let me okay. do that. Yeah, two successes. Okay, fantastic. So you you are able to even though this thing is pretty tall up, you're 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 not a, a, a tiny person, um, and you're able to uh, grab it as it's going by, grab onto the scepter. The scepter is still held very tightly in this um, hand. Uh, and both of them appear to be kind of anchored into this cobble body, which is what this thing is. Um, uh, so you can you can grab onto it, but you're, you're kind of it, like, it's far enough up, it's kind of got you on your tippy toes. And so you're kind of like keeping up with it as it goes. Um, and if you'd like the next turn, you can make an effort to try and like pull it pull it loose if you'd like okay um pax you're gonna try and leap onto this thing's back like it's well, a giant water buffalo and you're gonna ride that sucker to town seeing, <laughs> seeing that he has a hold of it um what okay. i'd like to do is i'd like to try to use my body in a way that it can actually add to the momentum for him pulling this out oh, so i okay. kind of want to like fling myself and kind of like use that body weight to help dislodge it while he has a hold of it. Teamwork. Okay, are you doing that by snagging the scepter or are you doing that by snagging Alex? Um, so I'm going to try to, yeah, I'm going to try to grab the scepter also as I fling myself in that direction. So okay. it's kind of like, a, yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be the focus of it okay. as well. Only, Not to try to get rid of Alex, but to try to help right. out. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, yeah. So you can, if you would like, you can use this as a um, you can use this as an assistance to Alex's action, so be a supportive yes. action on uh, as opposed to doing it on its own. Because what that will do is give a chance for him to have pulled it free, as opposed to uh, a chance for you to also have a hold of it. Yeah, so that's what I'd like to do. I'd like okay, to fantastic. basically offer an assist. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do because you're you're actually helping him assist with uh, pulling it free. I'm going to have you roll. Um, uh, let's see. How about strength plus uh, athletics? And if you have an appropriate uh, specialization, feel feel free to use it. Well, I'm pretty flexible, so that should help okay. in some sort of sure. momentum. Sure, you're like um, you're like okay. If I get pull on this angle, it'll help keep the it'll help pry it free. Okay, since I'm since I'm being uh, flexible, is there a way I could use dexterity instead sure. of strength? Yeah, okay. sure, no problem. So you're you're basically you're you're just trying to rather than like physically bully it out, you're like okay, well if I if I help by pushing on this thing over here or, or tugging right. on it, you know, maybe it'll, maybe that'll kind of leverage it loose. Yes. Let's do that. Oh, I got a 10. Yay. Yay. So three successes plus nice. including the 10. Fantastic. Four, I got a nine. Fantastic. So four successes. Fantastic. Okay. As you, uh, with, with your assist that, uh, the, the scepter, doesn't the hand stays stuck it was obviously stuck in there a lot more than the scepter was but because the scepter the the couple body was relying on the scepter being clinched in the hand to anchor it in um it, you're able to pull it out of of uh the the wrist's grip um and the the scepter itself um kind of kind of gets loose and it kind of fumbles around uh, Alex and probably make a grab for it um, on his next turn just to make sure it doesn't like tumble all the way to the ground and that kind of thing. Um, what you notice though is as, as soon as this scepter pops out of uh, the, the clenched hand, um, the wind dies completely. The snow completely stops falling. Like 
it's not even like the snow that was st already in the air hits the ground it just stops it's like there's still snow on the ground but the 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 storm is it's like it's instantly over Raz, would you like to continue uh, re uh, trying to get the bowl out of the cobble body's hands? So, so when the scepter comes out, um, it doesn't. But the the cobble body is still going. The cobble body is still going. It is. So it, it doesn't it's affect the, them. It's got the bowl in its hands now. Okay. And it's holding it in its griffin hand, and it is preening over it. It is. It is just like oh, it's. It's so pretty. I love my bowl. I've always loved my bowl. The bowl. I love this bowl so much. I'm going to keep this bowl forever. And you can oh. see it's starting to try and and figure out exactly where it's going to put it. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't. It takes off. It's got like a little top hat that wasn't actually attached to its body. It was like clothing, and it, it whips that off and throws it away. Never like that hat. This is my hat now. This is my hat. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's tiny. Like compared to this thing's head, it's that you know it's it's like a totally miniature hat but it's trying to press it into its hat that's that's what it's obviously going to attempt to do so you can try to remove it from its hands if you'd like um yeah uh <clears throat> so my initial thought was that i was going to uh bargain with it to get the scepter by holding the bowl mm -hmm. um but since we seem to be getting pretty successful with that. Like I've noticed that, uh, that that doesn't seem to be an issue, but I do want information. So yeah, I decide I, I kind of, I would like to uh, get this bowl okay. yeah, and, and so try to use it as a bargaining chip. Okay, why don't you roll me dexterity plus larceny if you have any, because larceny is specifically about pickpocketing and stealing things and, and that kind of thing. So I have one larceny, so oh, and I have four dexterity. Oh, so nice. I five. And this thing has three dexterity. I lost a die. Actually, I'm only going to use strength, which is two, because he's trying to hold on to it. So I'm going to use strength for him. Plus, um, he's yeah, he doesn't really have any appropriate uh, skills. Oh, actually, he's got he's got brawl grapple. So I'm going to. I'm just going to give him one die. So he's not actually grappling a person. I'm just going to give him one die for his skill in that. Um, and he got one success that exploded. So he only got one success. How many did you get? None. None. Okay. <laughs> so he, he holds on. It's, it, it looks kind of iffy and it's kind of funny to watch from the outside. Those of you who are observing this, you know, this, this tiny little androgynous person in a hoodie um, and this great big, huge monster beast are, are, are like back and forth with a big, big hand, teeny tiny little hand and this singing bowl. And it's kind of fumbling between the two of them. And, but eventually after like three or four fumbles back and forth, the, the cobble body gets it, gets it in its hand and it slaps it on its head. And I said, no, it's mine. It's always been mine. Why you take my things? I just wanted to talk to you. I just talk, wanted to ask you some questions. Talk, not take. Talk, yes. not take. Talk, not take. So it's it's as it's it it appears to be willing to talk to you, but it's it's definitely doing something with the bowl. And as you watch, as it, uh, uh, as as turns pass, um, assuming you don't stop it from doing it, you, you notice that little pieces of wiring and chain and things like that that were already part of its head start kind of tendriling up and incorporating the singing bowl into the creature's actual head as a as a, a accoutrement. I would like. I would I'm like okay to use witches, witches intuition while they're talking. <laughs> what? 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 Okay. Yes, definitely. Just go ahead and roll it and let me know how many successes you get. This is Lou using witches intuition. I've got two. You've got two successes. And let me check and see. Is there a. Uh, it's minus their composure. And their composure is one. <laughs> 
uh, and they didn't get a success on it anyway. So yes, so you get two um, two successes against it. Are you? What are you looking for? Would, do you have a preference, or do you just want two little tidbits? Or I'm trying to see what it's afraid of. It is afraid of losing, or, or specifically of people taking away its things. And you kind of get the feeling that that would. That, that because its things are itself, that that would, you know, if, if everything of its things got taken away, it would no longer exist and it doesn't want to no longer exist. But also it just likes its things. And anyone here, that's a weird long voice, hang on. <laughs> Good news, everyone, <laughs> new character. No. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Farnsworth. Yeah, oh, Zoidberg. <laughs> yeah, that's all we think oh, man. Can, can anybody create like some sort of portal to the hedge or something and get this thing out of here? Uh, hedge? It might hedge have. Can go to hedge. There's stuff in hedge, but it's stuff here. It's stuff here. I'm not done stuff here. Where is My the, stuff. My where stuff. do you where do you get to the hedge from here? Right? Going to hedge? There's a there are some crystals in there, and there's this little guy at the goblin market that has them, and you'd love them. Crystals? My crystals? Yes, your crystals. It has my crystals? Yes, there's three in of them. In the goblin market? Yes. You're trying to sell my crystals that yes. I've always had? Yeah, man, it's some crazy oh, shit. You're evil, man. <laughs> like, you're let me evil. make a roll. I was thinking here. the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> wow. You're, you're both playing evil, man. <laughs> Oh, it's world of darkness, not happiness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <This> obviously, <thing laughs> get so worked up, like you don't like so worked up. You think it's going to explode for a minute? It's just like it's going oh, to then, sound my things. Yeah, and go. Then, 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 then can I use a, a what do you call it? Uh, can I use one of my contracts here to uh, um, what is it? Gob goblins uh malignance and, uh -huh. and direct and now direct his wrath onto uh onto hob i mean onto if we're the, gonna go the, evil the let's from the, from the... <laughs> i think it's already there <laughs> yeah i'm like if we're, gonna go full e if we're gonna go normally, evil let's do full yeah. evil so normally you could if it was if it was directed to a person within that that person has to be within the line of sight but i oh, to give you a role and if you get an exceptional success which is five or more successes i am willing to have you even more ramp that thing up just because it's hilarious okay <laughs> so go ahead Poor and Bob. sure let's see here what would that be um Manipulation plus, plus persuasion. persuasion. So my uh, manipulation is supposed to be pretty high here. Let's see. Uh, manipulation is two, and mm -hmm. persuasion is another two. So let's do four. Uh, wait, hang on just a second. So I'd like to address, we haven't really dealt much with blessings and that kind of thing, because honestly, it just slipped my head as we were playing. Um, but your blessing as a Ferris allows you to spend glamour to add to your dice, your add dice to your pool for presence, manipulation, and persuasion skills. That's part of your innate ability as a Ferris. So if you have extra glamour left over, you can use you can basically spend that being so we're kind of at the end of the scenario to add extra dice to your pool to sure. do this all right uh, i'll spend i haven't spent any glamour so i'll, I'll spend four okay now normally if we were playing a standardized game with hard and fast mechanics, your your amount of glamour that you're uh, allowed to spend in a turn is limited by your weird. Um, but we're just going to hand wave that because this is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, there's four and yeah, four. Made four successes. Four successes. Okay. Uh, this. So it's 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 looking like like. I'm I'm very angry. You're you're not really sure that it's that it's worked because it already was kind of focusing its anger at this thing that would dare to sell its shiny rocks that it's never actually seen before. Um, so <laughs> at, at, as you're talking to it, it, it maybe it picks up its step just a little bit more, but it was already focused on that thing. And it does this. If you've ever seen a snake do like a serpentine thing, um, it does that, and the air around it kind of shimmers 
And yeah, Wayne's World, Wayne's World. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, it, a, it, a gateway doesn't open, but this thing from the tail first just kind of slips into nothingness. Um, and you, what you're left with is this smell um, that is similar to the smell of the goblin market where you guys were earlier today, because I know a couple of you oh, smelled oh, oh. specifically. Um, and it's, it's gone. It is, there is nothing left, but it's tiny little top hat still in the snow um, where, where you guys had it or where, where it threw it when it put its new singing bowl hat that it had always had forever. And irony, I pick up the top hat and put it on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Fair trade. And, and Alex, Alex looks at Pax and says, I, uh, I hope you weren't too attached to that goblin friend of yours. Well, it takes, uh, well, man, it takes spring to end winter, right? <laughs> so you now have the scepter in hand. You are uh, able to go back and redeem it for the promise notes of, of favors from uh, from Mr. Clark. Uh, and that's where we're going to wrap things up. You guys did a really good job. Um, I loved how you ran with everything. Um, I, we kind of ran over. I hope that's not going to cause a huge amount of problems. Uh, but thank you guys all so much for playing. Do you have any last minute questions or that kind of thing that, that I can help for you before we kind of wrap things up? What a huge uh, honor to play yeah. with you. That's really yeah. incredible. Oh, like, legit. You guys were amazing. You were amazing. And the way you tell the story and the world and stuff, I want to go to the hedge. <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. I want no, you to go don't. to the hedge. No, you don't. Yeah. We didn't get into oh, a lot well, of the darker just... side. You guys managed to miss the uh, encounter with briar wolves that you would have had if you hadn't negotiated for a way out of the hedge and had to find your way to the to the to back into the hedge yourself. You would have had an encounter with briar wolves, which are not a fun part of the hedge. Um, but you guys managed to uh, find another way. And for just the price of three clicky clacky rocks. Three shiny rocks. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. He unfortunately right. did not get to hold on to those very long. <laughs> for, for which Pax then negotiated revenge. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, the interesting thing is he doesn't know which rocks he's looking for. So that's yeah. going to be fun. <laughs> it doesn't matter because whatever, couple bodies just they they obsess on things yeah um you they're they're kind of akin to the uh if you guys have watched labyrinth the woman from labyrinth it's yeah. like with the big your tail oh, actually, yeah. 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 actually with all of your goblin bear. voices yeah with all of your goblin voices i kept i kept thinking about you know i kept having scenes from the labyrinth play through my head so yes <laughs> It is no, definitely cool. one of the inspirational materials that we drew from when we were when we were creating Lost. So it really what? was like a total manifestation of the id, like it, straight up. Yeah, like this thing. is mine. It's always been mine. Yeah, mine. <laughs> it's mine. Yeah. It's, 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 like it. it's mine. Yes, it's yeah. mine. With the, I like the cat tail in the window, Rasmus. Thank you. <laughs> this is mine. This is mine. Oh. Oh, I was hoping you weren't famous. actually show the cat, and we just thought the tail was yours. Like, <laughs> I wish. This I wish. This is the part of the Zoom call where we all we all awe over each other's pets. Oh, <laughs> okay. Find a pet. Find a pet. I don't have a pet. Make a pet. <laughs> Something. 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 Oh. This is this is Sigmund. Sigmund. Oh, 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 and Autumn's got theirs. Oh, <laughs> how cool. That's fantastic. Timothy, you ever just have taken one of the goblins in the window or something? <laughs> <laughs> and we have Prince. Oh, oh hello. Hi, Mine Prince. are all mad because I shut my office door so that they wouldn't come up here in the middle of the, the um, game session. So, um, so I want to thank Throne Monkey guys... for watching too. They, they let you. Oh, yeah. That's um, Throne Monkey is actually one of my friends. Um, oh. I've known them for like 20 some years. And uh, their wife is actually immortalized in Changeling uh, as one of the. Uh, I think she's in the core book here no kidding as a true fae yes her name is carrie urban and she uh is let's see is she in here that's so cool i'm jealous one of the books yeah she's <laughs> awesome. uh she's a she is immortalized as one of the npcs in 
in this. I, I like to do that when I'm um, when I'm writing stuff. In fact, we've done it, uh, the LARP group that I belong to auctioned away for charity, um, various and sundry things. And one of the things that they auctioned away was me including their, uh, your, your character-ish uh, into uh, an upcoming Changeling book. So we did that as a way to benefit local charities. I just cool. have to mention nice. that, that my name is one S at the start and two at the end, <laughs> <laughs> in case you need just in case know. I needed to know. Yeah, just yeah. mentioning Ray it. Mouse. <laughs> yeah, by the way. <laughs> so you guys have done this before. I haven't done this before. Um, what what do we do now? <laughs> Autumn. Ellis. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Okay, so, oh. so we just said hi. Yeah. Yeah. The, voice, the voice in my head. <laughs> Hello. Yes. The we're, voice in my head. We're not crazy. Hi, we're Ellie. talking to ourselves right now, everyone. I'm sorry. This is an entire inner, inner monologue happening. We're just, we're just working it out. Cool. We're doing this gall so therapy good. together right now. Yeah. <laughs> Empty chat. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming and playing. This was really fun for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jess. This is so much this fun. I really appreciate your generosity in oh. play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So awesome. If you, uh, <laughs> if you want to do this again and need players, you know, I'm here. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm hoping maybe eventually to be able to do more with Lost um, with Geek Therapeutics. Uh, Tony has just been absolutely fantastic and supportive about it. And I think it's a, a really, and I, of course, we, you know, we all have our, our favorites and Lost is definitely my favorite of the games that I've helped create. And uh, I think beyond that, that it has some really, really cool potentials uh, for therapeutic exploration. And so I'm super, super honored to be able to help bring that to you guys. And if you guys have any questions or anything later on, I know I'm always a Oh, I should have thought of that to ask them, but please, you know, come find me. I'm I'm available pretty much everywhere as jesshartley.com or just jesshartley.com as Jess Hartley. So yeah, just <laughs> hit me up. I, I am. I, I am actually three websites in a trench coat. <laughs> yeah. But the thing, this this game as a tool is freaking marvelous because wonderful because you can really take the personalities of the kids you're working with and put them into the setting yeah and there's really so many it. great metaphors for working yeah. with trauma in it so yeah yeah mm -hmm. I you also did all scion the... right you also did some work on scion is I that did. right i did i worked yeah. on the uh not the most recent version of it but the original version i worked on the um demigod and god level versions of it um because it has three books Hero, demigod, and god. I didn't work on hero, but I worked on the other two. And can and can people also find like Little Yoshida and Exalted uh, in Northern Twilight on Amazon? Uh, in Northern Twilight, I believe can be found on Amazon. I don't know that Little Yoshida is because Little Yoshida was a, a novel that I wrote in chapters for the game company to go with uh, the game Alpha Omega, which I don't believe is still being produced. Um, so I'm not sure if they can. Um, if, if you can still get Little Yoshida anywhere. But um, I do have, if you're interested in my writing, I do have a book called uh, Monsters I Have Known that's a collection of my short story work uh, that's been published. And it, that's out on Amazon in, in PDF and, and in uh, softback version. So if you want to check it out, feel free. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. Awesome. Cool. Fantastic. Thank you, you guys yeah. are great. Thank you guys all so much. Um, so yeah, I guess. Bye. 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 Love you all. Don't get lost.